And Ben, you can tell me if we're live. Okay, guys, welcome to this live event that you've seen me promote. I'm here with the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. John Loger from Consulting Unleashed. Uh, we got to spend a couple hours on Sunday just chatting through what is about to go down here. Um, this guy runs an amazing agency, over $30 million in revenue per year. Um, and he's going to take some time here to help share his thoughts. And he's going to give, like he quoted, a fire hose of information right now on sales, offers, all kinds of stuff that's going to just blow your mind. So get a pen, get a paper. Let's get ready to do this. And let me introduce my, John here. John, why don't you give a little bit of a, a background on yourself? Hey, man, thanks for having me on, Raul. I mean, I, I guess the last time we met was at TNC, which was a live event. Um, we got to spend time. In fact, we talked about sales. We actually went through a whole sales scripty thing uh, together in that conversation. So for those of you who don't know me, uh, I've been in the game for more than 34 years. I know I look very young for my 30 years of age, but I've been in business for 34 years. I've been, I've been unemployable, uh, built several agencies, uh, multiple software companies, uh, and right now I'm helping uh, groups of agencies around the world in Consulting Unleashed. Uh, I also am part of an agency that's doing 30 million uh, revenue, uh, about to actually uh, uh, sneakily open up another agency that nobody knows about. But uh, this is, again, we're, we're in an opportune time in the world. But um, uh, for me, uh, I'm big on strategy. I'm big on getting into niches and I'm big on, on conversion. So my specialities are to, uh, to help people zero into profitable markets. Uh, and more importantly, actually build a real sustainable business. So to move from that freelancer model thinking where you're actually building an asset and building a business, the one that you can keep and grow or one that you can actually uh, build to sell. So uh, that's what I'm really good at. I've helped a lot of people do that. Uh, uh, we get crazy, crazy results. But I think the biggest thing is what people focus on most becomes their reality. That's a, a theme that I tend to run. Um, and at the end of the day, we are all in business for uh, the reasons of our freedom, uh, to make sure that we profit from the value that we deliver to the market, and more importantly, that we make an impact on uh, our lives, the people we love, and also the people we serve as well. So that's essentially the essence of, of, uh, of what I'm all about. Yeah, and whoever's here, I want you to write hashtag live, and we're going to be doing this training, or John's going to be hosting this training on the fastest path to cash. So hashtag cash. You're going to hear some serious <laughs> ear candy. I'm lucky enough to have learned from John myself and had multiple times to speak to him, but the agenda is going to go beyond what this agenda I wrote out was, but it's going to be about generating leads, sales conversions, mm -hmm. charging higher prices to people with fat, big pockets. Um, and there's going to be a yep. bonus at the end for everybody to take advantage of. So we'll share that at the end. So stick around. Um, and if you want to tag anybody of your colleagues, your friends, take that opportunity right now to do so. Um, we'll keep the replay up for just a little bit. But with that being said, should we go into the training or should we talk about what they're about? To let's get into it, man. Let's let's get into it. I mean, I'm, I'm, everything that I'm going to be sharing here is is focused towards, uh, 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 I guess, generating business to acquire customers, to convert customers. But what I want to kind of do is a lot of people don't realize the, the, the times that we are in, right? Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to kind of preface this. I want to give you a perspective of opening your eyes to the opportunity that we have in, in, in our world of building our agencies. There's never been a better time to be in this market. There's never been a better time to actually establish a brand and build a blue ocean uh, type situation for yourself where you can dominate in markets because the playing field has been leveled by the virus and the playing field has been leveled by the shattering of a lot of our economies. Uh, think about, you know, right now in the US, over 41 million people are out of a job right now. Um, uh, in Australia, we've got 10% unemployment because of what's happened. Uh, in Europe, this has also happened. And businesses are just starting to kind of uh, 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 trying to figure out where they're heading and what they're doing. But in all of this craziness, uh, what I want to share is just a perspective and a focus. And more importantly, to give you the idea of what's possible, what, what is uh, out there right now uh, and what is coming for us uh, because a little bit of a future prediction and uh, the past is representing the future. So we're gonna see a cycle that we're about to go through and I'm gonna share some demonstrable statistics, stuff that I've actually gleaned from some of my friends and some of the biggest consulting firms in the world. Uh, in fact, you're gonna see a, de uh, a deck from Bain & Co, uh, one of my colleagues in the consulting world. Bain & Co one of the largest consulting companies in the world that is doing crisis management in this time. And they're, sho they're showing exactly what needs to happen to actually thrive in these markets. So all of you that 
that are watching this video, you're going to get a bit of an insight into some of the cool stuff that I get access to that is a little bit higher level thinking from a strategy point of view, but it really resonates and makes a lot of sense at, at our level of running, you know, whether you're a solopreneur, whether you're scaling as an agency, whether you're just kind of getting into the market, a lot of the things that I will share with you, even though they are speaking at uh, the insights and the intelligence of what the bigger players are saying, it is incredibly relevant to what we're doing now. So I'm going to uh, share my slides here, Raul. Before you share your um, screen really um, quick, we got to get some somebody like, are you guys ready to see this? If you are, type in do this and we're going to share the screen <laughs> right now. So while John's pulling yeah, up that first point, let's get, the, let's get the momentum going so you can have some energy here. So type in do this and we're going to do this. All right, do you have sharing there access? Uh, I'm going to do it right now. Beautiful. Ba, 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 ba. Can you see my screen? Yep. All right. So thrive in new market economy. Um, let's just get into this. I know this recording, I'm happy to answer questions are going to be here for uh, the time that uh, Raul is allocated here. Like Raul said, this is going to be a fire hose of information. You'll be able to uh, screen grab, screen capture a lot of the stuff we're talking about. Uh, I'm going to be sharing with you campaigns. I'm going to talk about converting sales easily. I'm going to talk about going into hot niche markets. I'm going to talk, talk about uh, um, uh, what is important right now that you could be doing. Uh, and I'm just going to walk you through a really simple structure of how to close uh, deals right now that are being left on the table because let me tell you there's a ton of money that can be picked up right now uh, and the market is ready the market is willing so uh, just to give you perspective the rule of thirds right one third of businesses will never reopen they will be leaving the market right now so in fact i think it's going to be a rule of 40 percent of the market isn't coming back they're gone right one third of the businesses are going to stay in business they're going to keep afloat day to day wait and see what happens they're going to try and survive and work their way through this uh, market and there are one third of businesses right now and this is the third that i'm spending a lot of time in and that is the third of planning strategically pivoting on delivery of service offering looking for the gaps in their markets creating new products looking to serve and to thrive in this downturn of our economy and we're going to see the downturn play out over the next two to three years but this is an exciting downturn. I know it sounds really horrible when I say that this, I'm feeling very opportunistic and uh, very optimistic about what's going on. But in these times of crisis, that word crisis and opportunity have very strong relevance in the marketplace. So uh, this is uh, a VIN diagram uh, uh, that a couple of friends of mine, uh, Todd Herman and uh, Simon Bowen were looking about a futures, future pacing into the market, right? So I'm just gonna put this here. Uh, so I've got this out of the way. Future pacing the market. So here we are, January 2020. Everything was normal. We're looking ahead for a great new year. We hit February, March, April, uh, and the world implodes, right? Coronavirus happens. But what happens here is we're about to hit, uh, you'll see this line here, we're about to hit what we call a mini boom. Because 30% of businesses, they're going to slowly go, go away, and it's going to leave a huge gap in the market. And right now, there's a lot of businesses that are sitting in the middle. Uh, they're waiting and see. They're trying to ride this through. They're going to do everything they can to survive. They're thinking survival mode. And then you've got a bunch of businesses right now that have been absolutely crushing it and thriving it and pivoting in the market. And their growth trajectory in the next three years is going to be steady. But this thing, 18 to 24 months, there is a curve that occurs in business where if you've actually set yourself up correctly, that you will see a huge influx of business uh, if you've scaled properly, if you're actually structured for growth. And what happens is if you'll notice the gray line here between where the red line is, and where the blue line is, look at the gap in the market, right? All these businesses are gone. And this is why these types of businesses who are actually thriving right now are gonna experience a very hockey stir a hockey stick curve growth rate. Think about Amazon. Where was Amazon the last uh, uh, financial crisis? Where was Uber in the last financial crisis? They were companies that were relatively new coming to the market in the last 12 years, they've become some of the biggest companies in the world. So understand that we are at a precipice of an opportunity where we are about to hit some massive growth curves uh, for business. Now, are we going to work hard? Absolutely. So this is what this is where we are right now. We are here just before that we're now starting to release restrictions. We're starting to open up, uh, uh, you know, in the next few weeks or over the next middle of the next month and the following month, a lot of businesses are starting to come back in the market. And so for the next six months between now and December, you'll notice this big yellow thing here. 
is a huge opportunity for us because there's going to be this huge market gap. A lot of people are coming back in, realizing a lot of businesses have closed. They've actually got to go to alternative uh, businesses right now for their services. And this is why our online marketing is very, very powerful. We need to make sure that the people we work with become very visible to the market because the number one thing that every business needs to do right now is to let people know they're open for business. Uh, and that's and they need to speak that very loudly, right? Uh, the challenge here is that over the next six months, some of these businesses on that green line aren't gonna make it. Uh, they, they've just been stuck too long in, in shutdown mode. They've lost their employees. That means they have to rehire to get skill. A lot of these businesses aren't gonna make it till the end of next year. They're gonna try, but they're just, the economy is gonna change, right? Of the 41 million people that are unemployed in the United States, I, I believe uh, over the next two or three years, 10 million of them are gonna start their own businesses. There's going to be a whole bunch of new businesses coming into the marketplace over the next course of the uh, next two to three years from what's happening. You watch the biggest boom of uh, business startups is going to be happening over the next six to 12 months. The biggest boom in business startups. That's exciting because I spent some time with a friend of mine who is a major venture capitalist. And uh, right now he has a bank account with $3 billion worth of money that he wants to spend on new startup ventures. He is actually looking for ideas. He's not looking for businesses that are validated in their idea, it validated in their proposition. He is looking for ideas and he's looking to write out checks for millions of dollars to people with ideas. So this is why I'm excited because there's a lot of innovation, a lot of creativity, and a lot of things coming into this market that perhaps you're not aware of right now, but there are people who have very big capital investments that they've built up over the last 12 years that they wanna push back into our economies. And they're looking for people like you who've got ideas. So to me, super excited. Next six months, very important for all of us. This is our opportunity to actually scale, build and grow uh, our businesses. So uh, just to let you know, right, in the middle of lockdown, people are still making money and, and taking advantage of opportunities. These are people that I'm working with right now. You'll notice that they're closing deals. You know, Tracy here, $500,000 worth of turnover in March and April in the middle of long lockdown. Right in the middle of lockdown, we've got Brian here closing deals in the in the chiropractor market, uh, two to five grand deals. We've got Simon here, five k per month, ten k per month deals in the middle of lockdown. Know that there are plenty of businesses right now spending money right in the market. Okay, uh, bigger deals. Right, we've got Dennis here signing eighty thousand dollars, twenty five thousand dollars deals. Uh, Kristen, eight thousand dollars setup fee, six grand a month for um, for a, an accounting firm. Tim, one hundred fifty thousand dollars deal. David, five grand a month retainer, two and a half grand. Edmund, 10K in the last week. Tracy, 5K deal, 3K deal. Headley, seven deals last month in lockdown, 5K for strategy sessions. But getting paid $5,000 for strategy sessions. Tina up there, $15,000 for a strategy session. This is the sort of money that is out there right now being invested in people who are looking to scale and generate ideas. Uh, we have Tim over here, closed 150 grand deal. We have Patrick over here, collected $117,000 check. $117,000 for Facebook ads management, not for ad spend. This is his money for managing an ad account, right? Uh, this is the biggest deal that he's closed. That just gives you an idea of what's possible out there in the marketplace, right? So here's the thing. History shows us that if you cut less in down times, you'll gain more in better times. A lot of people, what they've done is they've cut, let, they've cut, they've cut costs, right? And one of the first expenditures that happened in downturns is a marketing cost. People have gone in. So back in March, a whole bunch of people left the market left advertising, left promotion because they were worried about cash flow. They were, they were doing retraction, right? The problem is when they did that, they really retracted. There were businesses that did the opposite. They actually started to spend more on the advertising promotion and started to see the benefits of more advertising promotion. In every market that I've spoken to that I've seen around the world right now, there are people who are struggling and have gone out and there are people who are doing exceptionally well. I know roofers that are booked up for the next three months. I know fencing companies that are booked up for the next six months, booked out for business in the middle of all of this crap that's going on. But then I also know fencing companies that are not coming back to work. I also know roofing companies that did not survive this and are not coming back into the market. And the roofing business is a $60 billion industry. Very, very popular with a lot of agencies out there, right? So understand that for every area in the market, there are people who are thriving in this current economy. So... Uh, this is a thing from uh, 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 Sources SAP. This is the last recession. And the same thing is going to repeat out in this recession as well. Uh, if you look at the look at back at 2008 to 2010, right, the businesses that cut costs and stopped spending money and stopped investing and stopped pivoting, look at them, 0% growth rate, 
and they lost 1% in a, in a 12 year period, right? They were out of the market. But look at the businesses that invested in their marketing. In the recessionary period, they saw an 18% growth rate and another 40 to 50% growth rate over the preceding 10 years out of the last recession. These companies invested in growth, in pivoting and looking at ways of taking advantage of the market. So the companies that are pulling back and retracting on advertising are the ones that are losing out. The companies that are strategically looking at their campaigns to leverage their opportunity, to build their brands, to actually engage with their audience are the ones that are actually growing right now. So uh, this is from uh, Bain Co. Now Bain Co is one of the biggest consulting firms in the world. They are a $12 billion company uh, selling consulting. Who knew that consulting scaled 12 billion bucks selling, uh, solving problems and selling consulting. But this is their, this is part of their, this is their current, by the way, 2020, March, right? Uh, strategic risk management deck right? I was, I was very uh, privy to get access to it. But look at the right hand side here. Their recommendation, play offense, invest to enhance product and market share leadership, proactive acquisitions, invest to grow, redefine your business around uh, defensible core. So get to your core business and making sure that your core business is strong, right? Selectively invest to grow the core um, and cost transformation and fund for future business. So it's all about investing and growing, right? Notice it's really weird seeing a, a very conservative consulting firm say things like go big or go home, right? Go, go big or go home, right? Aggressive cost transformation, urgent cost transformation, pair back non-core units and process focus and core into areas of strength. Focus on growth, right? That's what they're doing. So even the biggest players in the world are telling companies big and small to play an offensive game rather than a defensive game. Play defense, you're going to retract and you're at the mercy of the market. Play offense, you control the market. That's the deal, right? So we are in a, a, an interesting world of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. There's a reason why I bring this up because you need to think about where your customers are and where you are and where we are in the world, right? Right now, self-actualization and self-esteem are not important. This is what's important right now. Our personal needs, our physiological needs are important. Our safety needs, personal security, employment, business, resources, health, right? Uh, connection, love, belonging, friendship, intimacy, family. If our messages are aspirational and are, are about, you know, let me give you a bucket load of leads, let me give you a bucket load of business, all that sort of stuff, that's going to fall on deaf ears. What people need is they need safe. What people need is right now businesses are in this safety mode and businesses need to be in, need to be playing up to love and belonging, connection, intimacy, family, uh, you know, connecting with their audiences, connecting with their customers. That's where our market is right now. So think about this, our message to the market has to change to reflect where the market is. If we're talking aspirational, we're talking over the heads of people, we're talking emotion. And right now people need practical, pragmatic results, solutions, help me get, help you solve my problem, help me get uh, results. That's where they're at right now. And if your message isn't saying that, then it's falling on deaf ears. All these, all these uh, people out there who are uh, uh, pre uh, doing predatory marketing, right? They're being predators by marketing, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, huge claims and all those sorts of things. All these people are looking like douchebags. This is douchey marketing, right? We don't need douchey marketing. We need practical, uh, pragmatic, results-driven. That's what people want to hear. They want to hear a plan. They want some assurance. We are in two places in the world right now. The United States military, back in 1990, when the collapse of the, the, uh, the Soviet bloc, came up with an acronym called VUCA, V-U-C-A. Now, VUCA stood for volatility, right, uncertainty, right, complexity, and ambiguity. Right, we are definitely in volatile times. We're definitely in complex times. We're definitely uncertain, and we are certainly definitely in uh, in uh, ambiguity in terms of what we do. The idea is to shift over to thinking of clarity, assurance, leadership, movement, calm. We as business owners have the opportunity to help people in that right hand side to give people clarity, to give people a sense of assurance that they can move forward, to give people a sense of leadership, to show them that, hey, there is a way to go to move forward and a sense of movement because fear lives in stagnant water, right? When nothing moves, it's dead, right? If we're not moving, we are dead. We are dying if we're not moving forward. So understand that people are looking for people who have ideas like you, who, who can see the opportunity, who can help them with your skills, solve some of those problems, give them some opportunity to see the resonance within the fact that they can actually grow and move their business to stay in business, right? That's what they need right now. So think about high hierarchy of needs. Where is your message? Are you speaking above 
or are you speaking at the market where it's at right now? Are your offers? I'm going to show you a whole bunch of offers you can run to the market. So, uh, what uh, think about what's happening right now and how people's behavior is changing, right? People are focused on the essentials, right? Isolation, lockdown. We're just getting about to come out of lockdown, right? Uh, if possible, we're trying to be with family and friends. We're trying to connect with family and friends. Uh, food, shelter, access to information, media, health services, and transportation. These are the things that have been very important to us whilst we're in this lockdown period, right? Communication, mobile, internet, entertainment, through the roof. 400% increase in uh, uh, streaming uh, uh, levels on the internet and search volumes on the internet. In fact, for all of you here, this became the most important computer in the world. This thing here is the most important computer in the world right now. Okay, and if we don't have a strategy to communicate on this thing from a business point of view, then we are dead to the market because 80, 90 percent of search right now is happening on this mobile device. So knowing that, right, think about how businesses are, are operating right now. Most businesses are rationalizing their costs, negotiating with suppliers, eliminating unnecessary and discretionary expenditure. They're managing their employees, they're furloughing, unpaid leave, cut down hours, letting go of staff. They're placing safety measures into place to minimize the risk of infection at their workplaces. Notice a lot of restaurants, a lot of places you go, uh, giving you hand sanitizers, giving you masks, all that sort of stuff, right? They're managing clients they serve, they, 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 that they serve, communication and regular updates on changes. They're pivoting to new services and operational standards. So they're bringing new products, new services. We've got alcohol companies that are making hand sanitizer right now. Uh, we have a company in Australia called Bundaberg Rum uh, that has put bottled in their alcohol bottle hand sanitizer that looks like rum. I hope people aren't drinking it, but and it's 60 proof, right? Um, but uh, they're repivoting and they're repaying. And by the way, they're selling out of this stuff. They can't make enough of this stuff. So they're pivoting with new ideas in the market. Uh, adjusting product delivery categories and distribution. They're closing their stores. They're placing the business, uh, placing a uh, place of business due to isolation and lockdown. However, some people have pivoted to working from home or having their teams work from home. This is going to have a huge impact on commercial real estate. Going to have a huge impact on how people uh, 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 actually hang out in cities in the CBD. Like one third of the people who are working in the cities aren't coming back to work in their buildings anymore because they found out that they can work from home. A lot of convenience in that. So they're working virtually with team and customers right? These are the things that are going on for businesses right now, okay? For us in this world, right now, we have to behave like a startup. We need to hustle up, we need to work up, and we need to start up, right? Big businesses, think about airlines. They have to, be they have to behave like a startup. Their business has been absolutely decimated, so they've gone back to uh, looking at their core to be able to maximize their opportunity in the market. So they have to work and think differently, right? We need to think a little bit more strategically. We've got to work hard. I'm telling you right now, I'm working harder than I ever have in the last 30 years. My business is going through the roof, going like crazy. My clients' businesses are going through the roof like crazy uh, in the middle of all this crap because we're actually over-communicating, over-engaging. We're looking at ways of trying to serve rather than uh, uh, push things in people's faces, right? We're trying to serve. We're trying to take a sense of leadership with the customers and with people in the marketplace to try and help them in this ridiculous time to try and navigate their way through opportunity. And for us, we need to be in startup mode. We need to act like a startup mode. It's amazing how many agencies, I talk to a lot of agencies at a high level. I'm talking about 20, 30, $50 million agencies, those guys. One third of those guys literally dropped their clients and left the market. We're out of business. All our clients are retracting their marketing budget. We're out. Tony Hawks, the billionaire skateboarder, last month in the middle of April, uh, or sorry, uh, late March, uh, mid, late March, early April, launched two ad agencies, one in Michigan and one in LA. They've got 13 brand name clients in the marketplace that were left by their current agencies who decided not to come back to work. They're picking up opportunities from people who have been leaving the market, right? Uh, I can give you stories of two sides of the coin here. Agencies that are just absolutely crushing it, like I've just shared with the examples of those agencies earlier on in the slides. And then the very same markets and the very same uh, agencies are seeing their panicking going, we're going to be out of business. Two very different mindsets. Startup mode, work up mode, hustle up mode. This is where we're at right now, right? We go, this is the reason why I'm working so hard because I know the opportunity is huge. It's massive. In our world, the opportunity is moved so huge that I'm sitting there looking at starting a particular agency like I haven't got enough on my plate, uh, building an, a, another agency in a gap in a market that I've discovered that is just going to be freaking huge, right? So that's where we've got to be in terms of the market. So businesses that will thrive uh, in the new economy. I'm going to share with you businesses that you should be going after and they're going to thrive in this economy. Funded startups. If you go to crunchbase.com, for the last, in, you can literally select 
business type, uh, six months, and you, and you can say businesses have had five to twenty million dollars investment or more funded in the last six months. And you can literally get a list of all these businesses with lots of cash. And funded startups need to spend that cash so they can get more cash, right? So funded startups is a huge market. Lots of funded startups coming in. Crunchbase is an easy website to go and grab that. If you're looking for niches of SaaS, product-based categories, technology, that sort of stuff, it'll show you all the companies that have cash. Everybody asks me, who's got money right now, right? These guys. <laughs> Like it shows you exactly how much money they collected in the last uh, six months. You can even go the last uh, the last 60 days, like the last two months. There are companies that had $50 million, $25 million, $5, 10 million injected into their businesses. By the way, this is a free website. You can actually garner this information from this free website. So you want niches and hot niches with cash. People always ask me, who's got the money, John? Here's where the money is, right? It's actually showing you. And they've got they've got to spend a portion of that budget has to be allocated towards marketing and services, internal automation, all that sort of stuff. So all of us here, what we do can benefit from working with crunch-based type customers. Um, luxury goods and services focus on companies that sell to the 1%. Now, in any recession, in any market, in any economy, luxury goods and services, massive growth market. For some reason, people like their luxury. And there are people out there, even though they've taken a big hit financially, they've still got plenty of cash. So, so the luxury good markets in recessions tend to actually grow. They, you know, the Louis Vuittons, the cars, the, you know, think about dealers. Uh, there's this fantastic magazine. It's called the Rob Report, R-O-B-B Report, Rob Report, right? Uh, it's like a $30 magazine that pumps out every quarter. And the advertisers in there pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to run ads in Rob Report because this is rich companies, pr companies with high-end products that just sell to rich people. That's what they do. And so we're talking, when I talk crazy products, like a million dollars worth of chocolate. Who buys a million bucks worth of chocolate, right? There's, a company, there's an advertising company selling a million bucks worth of chocolate. There's a company in there that'll take your $200,000 Porsche and for $300,000, they'll totally customize it. So they'll turn your $200,000 Porsche into an expensive $500,000. This place is booked out for refits on cars uh, uh, for the thing. People are spending money at the luxury market. They always do in recessionary periods. If you look at the product categories in these areas, there's less competition, lots of cash all that to go after. Target bigger companies with bigger names, they tend to invest more in marketing in downturn economies. Right now, bigger companies are spending a lot of money. I'm noticing on the TV, I'm noticing on the radio, I'm noticing on the social medias and the GMB, uh, sorry, the, uh, the Google Display Networks, the GDN. Uh, I'm noticing that companies are advertising at scale, just letting people know we're open right now. Come to our store, we are open, we are open, we are open right? They are spending a ton of money on products or services, and these companies need your help. By the way, just a quick tip. Big companies right now are kicking out their big ad agencies, and what they're now looking for is specialization. They're looking to bring in specialists in PPC, AdWords, specialists in Facebook advertising, specialists in automation, specialists in analytics, specialists in CRO. They're not looking for the big agency anymore. They're looking for experts in those fields, and they can't hire them in-house they have to go externally. So if you're an independent consultant right now, you could be working for Sony, you could be working for Bosch, you could be working for Samsung, you could be working, these companies are hiring you because they're looking for your skills in those markets. There's no university, there's no training for what we do. The only training we have is our real experience that we've had in the market. You can't buy that sort of stuff. Your value to the market is huge. Bigger companies are spending money. You want to, there's less competition up there. Not as scary. The zeros are just a bit bigger for exactly the same what you do that you're charging a fraction for in the market. So uh, healthcare, medical device companies, software, biotech, medical instruments, all growing in this market recession periods. We tend to go to health. Remember Maslow's hierarchy of needs? We're in the health markets, right? Um, repairs, maintenance, businesses, people will invest in repair uh, in recessionary periods rather than buying new. Renovation supply products providers, builders fire and renovators hire. In the last recessionary period, we had the biggest influx of home renovation shows and they're happening right now than ever before. And so what do we do? When we're in the time of looking at ma uh, rationalizing our costs, we're going to spend money on the things to improve our comfort, our lifestyle, our levels. Now, here's the other thing that you need to be aware of. Think about the last 12, 12 years. The last 12 years has been more billionaires and more millionaires created than ever in the history of the market. That means there is a lot of cash right across the globe in people's hands. And we've been in lockdown for two months. And guess what we've been doing in, for two months in lockdown? We're looking at our homes and we're writing lists of all the shit that we have to fix. We're writing lists on 
We've got to fix that kitchen. Those windows have to change. Uh, we've got to repaint the house. We've got to uh, fix that fence. We've got to do the new driveway, right? People are making lists. The contractor market is going to go through the roof, right? I've got guys that I work with that are in the roofing market. They're, they're, you know, they're, there's, they're, they're working with roofing companies that are spending uh, about 75 grand a month on leads, 75 grand a month on leads in the middle of all this stuff, right? And they're really busy. They're super busy, right? So I understand that this market is a growing market that you should be going after. Uh, Short-term money lending, business financing, mortgage lending, people need cash flow, access to money. They need to refinance, restructure their financial strategies. They will go to these markets. Uh, so these guys are going to be spending big on money. They're already spending big on money. And the banking sector is changing their product offerings uh, and shifting their adjustments to for the new market economy. So this market, these people have lots of cash coming. Uh, they're already spending lots of money. Uh, the training industry, this is going to explode. Vocation training so training for vocation for expert for expertise and licensing accreditation those two parts of this industry are going to go absolutely through the roof because remember 41 people out of work the american government the australian government the european uh, governments are going to be investing in training they're going to provide subsidies to businesses companies and companies that support the training industry to actually retrain reskill and bring people back into the workforce this happened in the last recessionary period this happened in this recessionary period before this also happened in the recessionary period before that uh, so we think about uh, you know i've been fortunate i know i look I, I know i look only 30 i'm a young chicken right but i've been through five of these things five and I've come out of each one of these better than I came into them, right? Five of these things, these downturns. But this market training and uh, this industry, huge growth trajectory, right? So products, pet care, the pet industry, multi-billion dollar industry. What do we do? We've got pets. You know, people are paying 30 to 40 grand for a service dog. The service dog, the service pet market is going through the roof. Uh, I know I didn't realize how much people were spending on those uh, on those pets, but up to thirty to forty thousand dollars for a pet, right? That people are buying. This is a huge market, and they like to pamper their pets. The pet industry gone through the roof. Look at all the reality shows, the hospitals, the pet shows, the vet shows. Right? Uh, these have grown, and what's happened is there's been an explosion in people getting pets. And now in the lockdown period, we needed safety, security, and people got pets. This industry on the fly, right? And by the way, this industry at a product level, at a healthcare level, uh, at insurance level, all of those levels, massive, massive growth, big retail market. Um, legal, multiple categories, workplace mediation, compliance, insolvency, commercial, residential property, law, personal injury, all these areas are going to be massive growth curve in legal markets. In recessionary periods, the law, the law grows. Right now, think of all the renegotiation, all the commercial contracts and commercial buildings right now. That's going to be huge. Think of these sub-niche categories that are big. And lawyers do spend money on marketing. They understand they need to be visible. And this is a market that is going to grow uh, in this time. So actions to get near the market. I'm just looking at the time. We're about 35 minutes into this, Raul. How are we? We've got any questions so far? We cool? If everybody, if you have questions, drop them in the chat. I know you guys may be taking notes like crazy right now. So if you, as you hear something that you liked, also drop that comment in the chat too. But we want to feel your questions and we'll take a pause at some point. But I'm going to let John continue on. But don't feel shy to ask anything because now's the time. Is this all? Is this good? Be you liking this? Are we on track for you know ideas and things like that? Is this something that's you know? I just want to make sure we're on the right track. Are yeah, we hey guys, guys, how are you liking this? Throw some hearts, throw some comments. Let's hear it, because then we can move on. We'll we'll wait for you guys to to tell us what you think here. Any questions there all so right. far? We're cool. Yeah, we're cool. Let's keep going. Let's keep going, right? <laughs> Let's keep the action going. Uh, I have to, ex I have to uh, apologize for my Minnesota accent. I know I talk really, really fast. Um, so um, here we go. Quick research. Uh, look at associations right now that are representing markets. Look for dominant players and hero businesses in those markets. Google for ideas, strategies that are working right now to grow in those current market in the current market volatility. Right now, success leaves clues, and people are documenting and publicizing their successes. They are publicizing what's working to try and help and share with others, so they can learn from as well. If I'm looking for the hottest uh, campaigns and the hottest offers, I'm doing the Googs. I'm on the Google. It's the most hidden website in the world that most people forget. Right, Google.com. It solves all problems, right? All, ro all, all roads lead to Google, right? So we want to look for influencers. We want to look for people who are in the market observing what's going on. Uh, we want to look at people who are saying, 
uh, uh, who are sharing hero stories. They're telling them, demonstrating example of positive buying activities and positive impact. Now, here's the thing, right? The reason why this is important is when I'm talking to people in business, if I'm hearing people say, hey, you know, it's tough out there and they're looking at their competition and blah, blah, blah. For me, it's like I need to be able to prove or have a demonstrable way to say, well, interesting. In every market, we're going to see a dichotomy or diversity at two different levels. We're going to see those that are doing exceptionally well in this industry, and we're going to see those that aren't doing very well in this industry. And there's one thing that this has really demonstrated, this period of time and this recessionary period we come through, and you need to understand this as an agency owner because this is your opportunity. This is gold, what I'm just about to share with you. The business, businesses have figured out this whole recession thing has demonstrated to them how fragile their business is. Those businesses that had systems, processes, communication, databases, those systems that built all the things that they need to do. Online marketing was uh, working for them, but they tracked and measured, looked at their investment. Those businesses have thrived in this economy. Those businesses have grown out of this economy, but the businesses that didn't have their act together, weren't capturing leads, weren't generating sales, weren't communicating with their customers, they're the ones that lost all their businesses. They're the ones that are dying and crying. So, that, so what this has done is that this thing has really shown or exacerbated the actual problems and the challenges that the market faces. So understand that if we understand where the, where the upside is and why it's an upside, and we understand what the failure is and how we can avoid that or how we can actually manage that to improve, to go better, this is your opportunity. That's why people need you right now because they need your skills to be able to fill the gaps that they have right now, which they made mistakes on. Right, I've got people. Uh, one of our champions, uh, Lauren, uh, she uh, spoke to somebody six months ago. And said, "Absolutely no, we're not going to waste our money on online." Blah blah. Six months later, yep, we're going to give you a ten thousand dollars a month budget. Let's let's do this. All of a sudden, their world's imploded. They go, you know what? We need to get our act together online because we look terrible online. Right, right now, the biggest thing that needs to be fixed is websites. Your presence, your real estate online, if it's not communicating how you're helping people in the current environment, if it's not a message or the offers have not been pivoted to how people or your customers are buying right now, then the website you've got right now is not serving you. And right now we're playing Tinder with websites, with businesses, swipe right, swipe right, swipe right, right, swipe left, I like this business, swipe right, swipe right, right. So we're in the Tinder market. So we need to understand what's working and what's not. Uh, let's go and get some clients. We want to create an offer we can, that we can help with existing client opportunities and new client opportunities. We need to build a list of prospects. We need to craft a campaign that offers help and speaks to the current situation and the short-term opportunities. And we need to get to a phone conversation. The fastest way, there are two things that you need to grow your agency. And these two things, nothing else. You need to get on the phone. You need appointments and you need presentations for sales. That's it. You need to get on the phone and talk to people, right? Or get them to get on your phone and talk to you. And you need presentations. If you are focusing on anything other than those two things right now, you're focusing on the wrong things. The people that I work with are only focused on, let's get a conversation with somebody. Let's help them buy. Let's help them invest in their market. And let's help them, help them grow. Those are the two most important things you need to focus on right now and nothing else. Forget about you know, building your, your, uh, your funnels and all that sort of stuff. All that sort of stuff will come. What you really need to do is have hard conversations or great conversations with people who know that they've got to do something different. That's where the, that's where the money is right now. So three offers the market needs to be making right now. These are three things that we need to be doing, three things that the market needs to be doing. Number one, they need to have a relevant offer to its current customers. We're still in business, we're operating in a new way, and here's how we are helping you, right? We need to go back to our existing clients and let them know. We need to over-communicate with them because they're our, they're our opportunity, their cash flow right now, right? So we need to create a relevant offer, letting people know that we're still open and we're in business. All our email marketing experts right now, you are in business. I have email mar marketing experts right now getting paid ten to fifteen thousand dollars a month to write these types of emails. Imagine being paid ten to fifteen grand just to write emails, right? We have one of our uh, one of my champions right now is being paid eight thousand dollars a month to craft four emails a month. Can you imagine pay, get, being paid eight thousand dollars? That's two thousand dollars an email, two grand an email, right? But this company is making hundreds of thousands of dollars every single month out of those emails. That's why those emails, that, that $8,000 those emails, very valuable.
right? So relevant offer to the current customer, really important. Engaging all current and past leads and quotes with an incentivized deal. We are still open. We want to save you money right now. Here's a 30% lockdown deal or free delivery or a new way of doing business, right? You don't have to give it the money, the money away. There are two things you need to be thinking of right now from a business point of view. Remember, people need to save money. That cash flow is king, right? So we need to look at ways of either we either sell the same, we either sell the same thing we have for a little bit less or we sell the same thing we have at the same price, but we add more, right? We add more value, right? Because what we're trying to do is we're trying to help people in the marketplace. This will help you focus, all right, to get to get more sales in the market. So we're going to- John, like the yeah. number one and number two points right here, I think a lot of yeah. people miss the mark on those two because everybody feels like they're in this crazy rat race to go get a new customer. But what you're forgetting yeah. is your whole database. That's how you can really kind of move the needle in your business is focused yeah. on people who already do business with you, give them something super valuable and offer an upsell to upserve their business. And then all your dead leads. I mean, those aren't dead. Those are yeah. just, they just didn't say yes before. Now, yeah. based on John's previous slides, I mean, they have to say yes to marketing and, and advertising to get customers. Yes. Otherwise they'll be yeah. on the other side of that, that slope. There'll be the, that, that yeah. percentage that is not coming back. Yeah. The other thing, number three, they have to, that's it, to speak to your point, uh, uh, Raul, you have to be advertising. If you're not advertising, that means you're not visible. If you're not visible, you're out of business, right? Understand that that's the most powerful computer in the world. If I can't find you on here, you are dead. If you're not running a Google ad right now to your audience in the market, you are dead. You don't exist, right? Because this is where I'm spending my money. This is where I'm searching for you. This is where I'm looking for you. I've literally sat there with a client and say, hey, why can't I find you on this device? But hang on a second. Do you know ABC company? Oh yeah, they're a competitor. Great, you know, you know X Y Z. Yeah, do you know uh, 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 Jones and Smith and company? You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, isn't it funny? They're visible, but you're not. They're making inquiry. They're getting inquiries, and you're not getting inquiries. Demonstrate to people what they're missing out on. They need to be advertising. If you're not advertising, you are out of business. You need to be visible, right? So if you're not doing the first two, you've got to be doing the number three. These are the three things that are only going to help people to thrive and grow, right? So offers, I'm going to craft, I've, I've, what I've done is I've crafted a whole bunch of offers here. Uh, take a screenshot because I've crafted offers in multiple different uh, categories. These are things you can use. These are things I know that work. I've tested them, right? They do get results and they do get responses. So I thought we'd do a little bit of value here and craft a few offers and give you stuff that's already working. So let's go into, so can I show you a system that'll bring you 30 new, new, new plan of care patients to your practice every single month, right? Can I show you a system that's doing that right now if you have a system? By the way, with these offers, you need to think about how, the, how can I apply this to me? You don't need to swap and copy the exact offer the idea is how does this offer or how does this idea how can i massage this to apply this to me right get direct access to patients minimize the impact of diminishing doctor referrals right now in the healthcare market doctors are not referring anymore the, the referrals have dropped that means that uh, that healthcare people have to go direct access to patients what do you want to be you want to be first choice or you want direct access that's the message right uh can we can we talk about so uh, just moving you out of the way here Raul, because you're in the way um uh can we talk about how to make the first how to make you first choice in community health care for back pain, balance, rotator, knee, autoimmune, and motor, motor neuron, motor neuron disease, right? How do we make you first choice? That's a big message, right? So um, uh, omni-channel. So if we're doing retargeting or multi-channel retargeting, here's some offers that you can do if you're doing retargeting, because retargeting is very powerful right now, and it should, it should be a mix in marketing if you're running ads, right? So let's go in. Uh, would you like to make your current so? Uh, would you like to directly improve your current advertising results and convert more uh, of your incoming leads? Uh, can I quickly show you how omni-targeting can drive buyers back to your business? Omni-retargeting means multi-channel retargeting, right? Facebook ads, Facebook retargeting, AdWords retargeting, Google Display Network, uh, LinkedIn, the Gmail accounts, Messenger retargeting, Instagram retargeting, right? This is multi-channel, right? Um, can I show you how you can follow every visitor to your website on every internet marketing channel for pennies on a dollar? right? Are you interested in seeing a strategy like that? Okay. Uh, just looking at the slides here. Um, can I show you three campaigns that will revolutionize your current advertising results? Imagine if you can go to this cool software called ispionage.com, I-S-P-O-N-A-G-E, like espionage.com. 
you can go and look at the top running ads and take the URL, stick it to Ispionage, and it'll tell you all the keywords they're targeting. It'll show you the landing page that's converting. It'll show you the ad that's all the, all the copy campaigns that are converting. It'll show you cost per click and, co and how much money they're spending on advertising. And if you pick the top three advertisers and went to the company and say, hey, what if I showed you the top three landing pages right now that are converting the most uh, leads? Wouldn't that be a better strategy than actually trying to guess what's working, what's not working? Can I show you what's working right now? Are you interested, right? These are the types of offers you wanna be doing. Sales automation and funnel builders, right? Can I talk to you about closing deals from leads you already paid for and discarded, right? Hey, I don't wanna talk about lead generation. I wanna talk about closing deals that you've already paid for and discarded. Are you interested in talking about that, right? Uh, can I show you a simple way to automate your sales process so that you never lose an opportunity to close a sale? Can I talk about you never losing sales closing opportunities for your business? Are you interested in something like that, right? Uh, can I show you how to increase your sales conversion by 30% without spending another dollar on lead generation? Can I show you how to, spend, how to, how to increase your sales conversions by 30% without spending another extra dollar on lead generation, right? Really simple, okay? Facebook ads offer, all right? Can I show you, this is, this is a bit uh, long-winded, right? But can I show you how to get direct access to buyers on their mobile phones that achieve three things, brand your business, make a direct offer to buyer to respond to and build a database of interested buyers that you can re-offer to at pennies on the dollar, right? Okay, uh, keep going. Uh, can I show you um, uh, a Facebook ad system that consistently brings in new buyers on autopilot? Can I show you how autopiloting your ads? How can I autopilot your lead generation, right? Uh, predictable. Can I show you how to get 30, 30 to 100 estimates on opportunities on autopilot, right? How can I automate your process to get this happening? Those people are doing things like high level, uh, who are doing automation, CRM, back end, um, uh, those sorts of things. This is your opportunity. Uh, what I would do is I would go and work with ad companies that don't do uh, don't do lead management with their clients and they just do leads. I would say, hey, let's do the leads, but let's plug in the leads management. Let's get better conversions for clients right now. Okay, so simple offers, right? Let me let me close some deals for you that we can uh, we can get on the phone for a quick chat. Let me close some deals, some sales for you. Can we get on the phone for a quick chat, right? Um, your sales opportunities cost is bigger, uh, is your greatest immediate increased cash flow acquisition strategy. Can I show you how you can get your hands on it? Reply yes to this email or give me the best. My best call to action is give me the best phone number I can contact you on. That's a call to action you should have on your emails, right? Um, so what is opportunity cost? Opportunity cost is all the people that didn't buy. And then what you do is you multiply the number of people that didn't buy. So for example, let's say you got 10 leads, two people bought, and let's say your average sale is five grand. So you made $10,000. But what you did was you lost $40,000 from the eight people who didn't buy. That's the opportunity cost. You spent money on advertising to get 10 people in, two people buy, eight people don't, your opportunity cost. So imagine if you just stick a 20% conversion rate and your opportunity cost is $40,000 every single month. Over the next 10 months, you're going to lose $400,000 worth of revenue. What if we could actually claw back some of that revenue by converting better at the front end? If we can put automation in, if we can put sales funds, upsell, downsell, cross-sell, right? If we can do retention strategies and we can capture the opportunity cost, that is big free money for lots of businesses, right? So you're spending a ton of money on advertising, burning leads uh, that are sales waiting to be closed. Can I talk to you about this, right? Never lose a sales opportunity by automating your follow-up, right? Uh, stop the bleeding of sales in your business. How many sales have fallen through the cracks? How much revenue do you think you've lost? I'd love to get that back for you. Can we hop on a quick call, right? Stop burning leads, start converting sales. I want to show you a simple system that will double your sales conversions. Really simple offers, right? Are you interested? So my favorite one-liner for people is, look, are you interested in this idea? What if, it, what if this was possible? Would that be something useful to you? Think of the phrasing of that, right? So other ways to find great offers in the market. For me, Google is the best place. Google best offers for plumbers, architects, accountants, gyms right now, right? Right now, LA Fitness has spent tens of millions of dollars on running campaigns on great offers for the fitness market. They, they've spent the money to test the campaigns and they've actually published those campaigns live on the internet for anybody to steal and borrow. So why reinvent the wheel? Uh, why not run campaigns that already work, right? Uh, look for offers in Google Images for bigger companies that have tested campaigns or still have ongoing campaigns. That means if they're still spending money on the campaign, it means the money, the campaign is still converting to the marketplace. 
uh, top 10, 100 sales headlines, etc. If you Google the top 100 sales headlines, sales copy headlines, and then adapt to those ideas, uh, you'll see much better crafted offers to the marketplace, right? Uh, case study research, marketingprofs.com and marketingsherpa.com. If you want case studies of campaigns at work, just go to these two websites. They've got amazing case studies. They've got breakdowns, they've got stats, they've got figures. You can literally reverse engineer strategies that have already worked and apply them to your clients. This is gold, right? If you can come to the market with something that's already working, they will buy. If you're working with a resource partner that has a campaign that's already working, all we've got to do is take the current campaign that's already working and paste it into a client that can benefit from that campaign. It's a pretty easy way to open up a door to sales, right? Uh, be, stay and thrive in business, right? Just got to be very careful. We are in business. You are a business owner. You're not a freelancer, right? You're a business owner. A business owner means that you're generating clients. You're converting deals. You're banking money, your bank account, right? That's what you're doing. So we need to be and we need to stay and we need to thrive. And that's what our clients need to do as well. Biggest mistake right now is to stop marketing. Anybody that's stopping marketing right now is out. Uh, I was talking to an agency, uh, uh, agency last month. They brought on 25 new clients. Can you imagine bringing on 25 brand new clients in the middle of, uh, uh, in the middle of May? 25 brand new clients. All, and, and half of those clients have never advertised before. Half of those clients have never advertised before, right? So all of a sudden, a lot of businesses are realizing that they need to be out there. They're realizing they've failed on a marketing perspective and they're looking for people like you to help them to run ads, right? Or to help them with their sales operations, right? So the world has already changed. Your marketing should too. Things to do right now, right? Um, socially connect with customers immediately. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, uh, uh, rally your clients into a community. If you have, build a community of clients, right? In our agency, we have a community of our customers, a community of competitors. We actually have a leaderboard of the people who are performing the best to the people who are performing not so good. And everybody can see that leaderboard. People love competition right now, right? So understand that we want to rally your clients in your community. You want to maximize your opportunity for communication, engagement, and leverage, right? Work together, provide solutions as a community, right? There are people who've got great ideas that are doing good things that you're seeing. Those people need to benefit from those great ideas. So this is one way that you can actually build a great brand in the marketplace. The idea is for you, you Inc. or you Business Inc. to become a brand and a voice to an audience, right? Um, be found online. Traffic is up. Online consumption is up. People are looking for very specific things right now. So we can actually target the things they're looking for. With a little bit of strategic searching using some tools like CMOS, uh, um, AREFs or HREFs, uh, uh, Majestic uh, and those sorts of tools, you can see the trends of what people are searching for in our markets when it comes to Facebook ads, AdWords. You can see the keywords that they're targeting. You can see all the things they're doing. This gives you topical information to go to the market with where the market is at right now, right? So we can easily find how customers are viewing or searching for our services by looking at the behaviors that are going on right now. SEO right now, more important than ever before, there is a huge resurgence in SEO because organic traffic has always been important. And guess what? If I can't find you, you don't exist. If I can't find you on Google Maps and it doesn't say that you're open, you're out. So you need to GMB, right, in your business. So uh, PPC, best and smart move. Most people searching on uh, screens uh, at home right now, they are searching on this screen. This screen is sitting behind them, beside them, whilst they're on TV, iPads, multi-screening, right? Uh, cost per click has dropped between 20 and 30% in the last four weeks. Competition has dropped out of the market. Think about all the comp competitors dropping out ads. Now you can come back in and run ads in, in uh, open gaps in market. Um, it's right now the time has become more visible. Uh, you want to pivot your offers a message to meet where customers are at in, the buy, in, in their buying decision. If you can understand how a customer buys a product or a service for your customer, your client, then you've got a license to print money. That's gold. Most people focus on generating the lead. What you should be doing is generating the buyer. How, who is buying? Why are they buying? And you need to speak to that message. The offer needs to speak to the buyer, buyer's journey. Go to a client, sit down and say, hey, you know what? What if we sat down and focused on how a buyer buys your product or service and market? What if we brought that into the market, right? Uh, I think it'll be a very different conversation and you're going to get more people actually engaging you because now you're talking about something that's relevant. Right, you're not just saying, Hey, let's get a bunch of leads. I don't want to get a bunch of leads, I want to actually get into the mind of somebody who's going to put up their hand and say, I am interested in your product or service. That's the best person that I can bring to you, right? So, 
Uh, be prepared for the bounce back. You need to keep marketing going. You need to take advantage of visibility of service offering. Uh, this is an opportunity to create a curve jump in your business. Right now, if you are open and you're letting people know you're open, remember that gap that I showed you at the very beginning of the slides. That gap is widening. That means all these customers that normally go to those businesses are not going to be able to find their regular supplier. So they have to look for somebody else. And the person that gets out in front of them is the one that's going to benefit in the marketplace, right? So uh, create special offers. You need to be putting out offers consistently to keep cash flow coming into your business. You need to create new products that are relevant to where your customers are at right now. Uh, Headley, one of our champions, has now created a strategic planning uh, uh, session that he charges $5,000 for. And all it is is a Q&A and a gap analysis of an audit of their digital blueprint. Where are you not working? Where are you working? What do you look like? How do you look online? What's your branding like? So it's like an audit, right? But then from there, they raise about 20 different line items that they need to fix. So now a customer that would normally have spent like a couple of grand is a customer now that's going to be spending $100,000 or more to fix all these problems so they can leverage themselves in the marketplace, right? So understand that you want to pivot what you do. You, you, right now, we can go niche. We can go deep. Uh, PPL, paper lead model, fantastic right now. I was talking to a company the other day. They're doing paper lead in the mortgage market. Uh, they've got one client that spends 50 grand a month on leads. They buy leads, their profit margin, it's costing them $15,000. They keep $35,000 profit out of 50 grand every month selling leads in the mortgage market. Can you imagine that? Spoke to a finance company, right? A finance company, auto finance company. So financing for commercial vehicles, that's what they do. Uh, cost, per, cost per lead, they're paying $130 for a lead. The cost to acquire that lead is about $50. So they're getting $80 profit for every lead that they give to the market. Pay per lead is a very powerful model in the market right now. Uh, run regular different campaigns. If you don't have an offer right now, you are not in business. If you don't have an offer sitting in front of somebody right now that they can take advantage of, you are not in business. You've got to be offering almost daily. I, I send out offers every single day, right? You need to change landing pages to suit the market and the actions. Remember landing pages, one page, one action. Most people make the mistake of putting too many actions on a page. If you want somebody to pick up the phone, then all you want to say is pick up the phone, call this number, call this number five or six times on a landing page. You want somebody to fill in an information to get an estimate for a quote, then hey, the best way that we can give you the best value is give some information, fill in the form here and put that form on that landing page three or four times so they see the thing that I want you to do is to fill in the form, fill in the form, fill in the form. If you need people to download a lead magnet that is going to support them or provide incentives or provide information, then you need to don't just put it in one place on any page, put it on the page four or five times, right? All right, you need to see that message. One landing page, one action, not 10 actions, right? You want somebody to buy your product right now where they hit the buy now button, then you've got to put that buy now button four or five times on that page, right? Because you're telling people exactly what you want them to do and you need to keep telling them over and over again. One page, one action. One page, one action, right? So uh, Google My Business for local SEO, huge right now. Average spend on this, by the way, three, uh, between $1,500 to $5,000 for setup. $1,500 to $5,000 for setup for Google My Business. Videos, citations, uh, uh, descriptions, tags, uh, links, all that sort of stuff. Very important. Then ongoing service fee between $1,500 to two to $3,000 a month to manage Google, Google My Business, Google Maps, right? To be seen and visible. Okay, super important for local businesses right now to be very visible in their market. Uh, the pivot, how can we make it easier for customers to buy is a question we need to answer. How do we make it easy for your customers to buy what you have to offer? What new products can we bring to market and uh, market quickly? What new ideas can we work on to bring to market quickly that'll make an impact? How do we package something up? New landing pages, new business offer websites, uh, listening to your customers about what they're saying, really, really important to have those conversations, right? So. Uh, I'm going to answer some questions. I'm going to talk about sales in a moment, but I'm just doing a brief pause here for a quick second here. Um, I'm doing a thing called, we call, we call it a web event for good, and we're raising funds for a charity, and we're doing how to sell websites right now at much higher prices. If you're doing AdWords, SEO, uh, CRO, your clients need to refix their websites. So we're doing a web event for good. It's a sales intensive on websites. It's four hours. We provide the recordings, the training, everything. The ticket is $97, and... We are actually helping three families have water taps plumbed into their 
homes uh, for this ticket. We're paying for the education of one child for an entire year uh, with this ticket. And we're also helping a village and a family get beekeeping, uh, a beekeeping farm to support their services. We are doing what we call the web event for good. We wanna help with value, provide, show people how to get great clients and how to sell sites on a much larger level uh, at higher prices. We've got some amazing tools and amazing things that people do. And so this is something that we're putting out there. If you go to website salesintensive.com, uh, you'll be able to see the details of what that's all about. Now, I want to talk, uh, Raul, can I, can we, can you come back on here? Yep, I'm here. Yeah. I want to talk about sales for a second, right? Because a lot of people ask me about sales and conversions. So I'm going to walk you through, if we can have a bit of a, uh, a chit chat. Um, what do you see as some of the biggest challenges people have in converting sales right now? What do you think the challenges are? Well, the first challenge is getting the lead itself because you mentioned attracting a buyer. A lot of people are attracting mm-hmm. leads that are are really not necessarily leads. They may have some like little like remembrance of even filling in a form. So they're not even motivated yeah. to, to get on that call. So that's like issue number one. Issue number two I see is the screening of those leads in the first five yeah. to 15 minutes to kind of make sure that they're in the right place and you can help them. And then number yeah. three is c- closing the deal eloquently, yeah. easily, and moving yeah. on to the next level of satisfying the customer and upselling. All right. So let's deal with the first one of getting the right lead, right? Um, there's a couple of ways we can do this, right? To me, I always look for the best lead list on the planet and that's LinkedIn. The problem with LinkedIn is you have to build this convoluted slow relationship to go and engage somebody on LinkedIn. But LinkedIn is a very powerful business list. It's probably the best business list on the planet. And here's why it's the best business list. Uh, People actually, you can identify a decision maker based on their title. That's number one. Number two, location. Number three, size of company. All those sorts of things you can see on LinkedIn. And with Sales Navigator as a tool, I'm going to share a really simple thing. I'm going to show you for everybody here, if you want customers five million plus, five million dollars plus companies that have between two hundred fifty thousand to half a million dollars or more to spend on marketing, would you like to find out those clients, Raul? One hundred percent. Okay, this is easy. A lot of people uh, look at LinkedIn and they look at all the convoluted ways. So I'm going to be a little bit sneaky here, right? I'm going to break some LinkedIn rules, um, but I'm going to do it in a way that will not hurt or impact on us in a negative way, right? So if we want to target businesses. Uh, we need to know who the decision maker is, right? So we need founder, owner, managing director, uh, principal, managing partner. These are the titles of a business owner, right? So in in our connections, most people have got a few connections on LinkedIn. Uh, What you want to do is there's this person called a LinkedIn lion, L-I-O-N, lion, right? A LinkedIn lion means a LinkedIn open networker. This person wants to connect with you and they have thousands, tens of thousands of connections in most cases. Right. So what you want to do if you this is a fast way to get a hot list, right, hot list. Right. What you want to do is you want to connect with about 50, 50 to 100 of these guys and connect with them in big cities, Chicago, New York, Melbourne, London, Prague, Berlin, you know, connect with them in the big cities. Right. The ones that live in the big cities, you can actually if you actually get sales navigator, you can open up sales navigator and identify the city and identify a LinkedIn lion. Right. And then it'll give you a list of thousands of people that are these LinkedIn lines. Now, these people are not your customers. Right. These people are not your customers. These are people who have connections, because when you go and do another search in Sales Navigator, if you've got like 50 lions that you're connected with, your network of six degrees is going to be like 20 million people. It's going to be huge, right, in the market. This is why we want to connect with a few LinkedIn lions, right? So very easy to connect with them. Hey, you're a LinkedIn open networker. I like LinkedIn open networkers. Can we connect? They're going to go, yep automatically you get their second, third to sixth degree of connection availability, right? When you say yes. And by the way, LinkedIn lines tend to spend more time on LinkedIn, so they'll actually respond faster, right? So now the LinkedIn lines are not important. Their connections are important, right? So now we're going to search for hot clients, hot markets, right? So you know all those niche markets that I showed earlier on in the presentation here? If we we could actually type in those niche markets into LinkedIn Sales Navigator, right? And then what we want to do is we want to identify the decision maker in those types of businesses. So what are their title roles, right? Uh, And if we were to pick, let's say we picked um, uh, accountants, right? So, or let's say we picked accountants who specialize in auditing, right? Because auditing is a big ticket, right? So accountants specialize in auditing. So I can actually in Sales Navigator identify accounting firm, auditing, right? Keyword. Uh, then the, the people, the decision makers in an accounting firm tend to be the managing partner, principal manager, or practice manager. 
managing partner, principal manager, or practice manager, managing director, or CEO. Those are the designators for decision maker. Now, we're talking about companies with budgets. So companies who are 5 million plus, they have money. They need money because they've got employees. Any company with more than 20 or more employees needs to be spending money on out marketing, right? Uh, they, they don't, you don't get to 20 or, or more employees without marketing, right? You need marketing. So I look for companies 20 to 50 plus, 20 to 50 plus, because that means those businesses are generating between five and $10 million and they're the sweet spot. And the reason why there's a sweet spot is generally the decision maker, the founder is still running the company at that level. They haven't hired a CEO at that level in their company. So you still got the ultimate decision maker to connect with, right? So just to recap what I just said, connect with LinkedIn line open networkers on sales navigator, get 50 of them, major cities. That's gonna give you a, a broader access and reach. Number two, decision maker, niche, 50 plus or 20 to 50 plus employees. Then degrees of connection, you just select from one, two, three, four, all the way to six, right? And what's gonna happen when you press search, on the, le on the left hand column, you're gonna have the total number of the lead list based on all the connections, the names, title, business location is all there. You've got a massive list, right? Now, this is where it gets sexy, right? That's not the list that I want. What I want is there's a tab, four tabs over and it's called, posted in LinkedIn in the last 30 days. Now, Raul, why would anybody waste their time posting stuff on LinkedIn in the last 30 days? Why would they be putting content? Why would they be putting information out there in LinkedIn? Why are they actively doing that on LinkedIn? Why do you think they're doing that, Raul? To get people to know, like, and trust them. Yeah, they want clients. They're looking for yeah. customers. They're actually marketing in LinkedIn. So I want to work with people who are marketing. I don't want to work with people who are in that major list that are never going to be uh, uh, engaged with me. I want to engage with people who are looking for clients, right? So I'm going to hit that tab. Now that tab, let's say you had 100,000 people on the big tab. On that tab, that list is going to drop down to maybe three or four, a couple of hundred, depending on how big the search volume is, right? So now I know about you, Raul, but can you manage a couple of hundred leads? Yeah. Really hard to marry, manage 10,000 leads right? Really hard to manage 10,000 leads, but I can manage 300, 400,000 leads. I can manage that, right? So now there's this tool and it's called anyleads.com, A-N-Y-L-E-A-D-S.com. Uh, it's a tool that you can take the URL of that tab, put it into any leads, and it will actually take down the contact name, the verified email, the personal email of the person, verified, right? And it'll test it and it'll put it in a spreadsheet for you. Company name, details, number of clients, and it'll put you it'll put it into a CS file spreadsheet. So imagine taking an ideal list of decision makers, companies that have money, right? The people you want to deal with. And now you've got a list of people who are actively marketing on LinkedIn, right? And I don't have to connect with them to engage them on LinkedIn. None of this, let's get to know each other. Let's, con let's connect. Because what happens on LinkedIn is people connect on LinkedIn. But they, they tend to visit LinkedIn every seven to 30 days. So you can be posting all these messages and connections and nobody responds for seven to 30 days. What I've just shared with you is now you have a targeted list that you can go to straight away, right? Cool or cool? That's, yeah, it's cool and cool. Yeah, that's no, that's, that's amazing. Cool. Yeah, that's insanely I mean cool. Now I have a buy, I've got a list of targeted people the right size companies, decision makers, I've got their name and I have their personal, people use their personal email in LinkedIn, right? Or their personal business email in LinkedIn profiles. So now I have it verified. I've got a verified email, right? Now I'm not going to go and blast these people because if I do, I'm going to waste the opportunity. What I am going to do is reach out and start to build a relationship more directly and much, much, much more quickly. But now I've got a lead list that I can build a relationship with. Because what I want to do is with those people, because I've got a small list, I want to go and check out their Facebook profile. I want to connect with them on Facebook. I want to connect with them on Twitter. I want to connect with them in, in, um, uh, uh, in uh, Instagram. I want, to follow, you know, I want to find out where they are in their social blueprint. I'm going to build out that connection. Because when I do a message, I'm not just going to send you an email. I'm going to send you a message in your Facebook DM. I'm going to send you a message. I'm going to find out where your phone number is. In fact, there's cool software that I can't go into, but it's tricky, right? There's software right now that will extract people's cell phone numbers out of Facebook, right? So I can get their cell phone numbers out of Facebook and I can text message people or voice drop people. I can do those sorts of things, right? So now getting hot leads, no, nobody has excuses. You can get hundreds and you can get thousands and you can get tens of thousands of hot leads, right? 
to start the conversation to get out to the market, right? So very easy. Uh, right now, you don't have to spend money on advertising promotion. You can find exactly who you're looking for. One of the things that we forget in the in our world is we should be operating, thinking a little bit more strategically, a bit more focused. Because what we're doing is we're trying to build. Like it doesn't take many clients to build a million dollar agency business. It only takes 24 to 27 clients to have a million bucks. If you're charging between two grand and three grand a month, 24. To, to, to 30 clients is a million dollar agency. Well, that's two to three clients a month. And every business on the planet, Raul, needs to be generating one client every 10 days. In the agency world, one client every 10 days, three customers per month. That's, what, that's where you want to go to be stable, right? So imagine having nine clients in the next 90 days. That's huge. I'm walking people through that structure to build a base of customers so they can scale, right? There are three elements of this business, Raul, that people don't realize. The first element is people have got to get to 100K, right? People are trying to make their first $100,000 in this, in this business, right? That's number one. To do that, that's all about mindset. That has nothing to do with skill. That has nothing to do with sales skill. That just has to do with mindset. You have to understand that you have value in the market. You have to understand that there are people who will value or that believe that they need to uh, receive that value and they're willing to pay. And then you get to choose how much you charge. And to get to 100K is not hard. I've seen people do that in, in 30 days, right? I've seen people, in fact, I saw a person do that in a week, right? Because they understood what they were offering to the marketplace, right? So that's the first milestone is mindset. Mindset is at that 100K mark, right? We've got to get to that 100K. But really, if you want to keep 100K, Raul, you need to make 200K because you've got these things called taxes and costs to run your business, right? We're talking 10K net in the back pocket, right? So... That's the first milestone is mindset. Second milestone from $100,000 to a million dollars, it's all about sales and marketing, right? All our 80% of our effort should be sales and marketing, 20% on fulfillment. And we can always, if we're making sales, we can always buy fulfillment. You can buy great fulfillment in the marketplace, right? So 80-20 rule from that 100,000 to a million, it's all about sales and marketing. Now from a million dollars to $5 million, it's about leadership, it's about management, it's about team. It's about scalability through systems and processes. So there are three distinct uh, focuses as you're scaling your business. At the 100 grand mark, mindset, work on your head, right? Understand you bring value, build your experience, your customers are paying you to get results and they're paying you to learn. One of the beautiful things what we do is we are in the business and the industry of getting paid to learn. When we look at our, our agency, for the first 12 months, we were testing Facebook campaigns to try and improve and get the data that we needed to be able to get outstanding results for our clients. Now we've got five years of data. So a new client comes to us and say, hey, we've got it dialed in. We've got five years of data to, to, to gleam from to zero in to the best possible campaign. We've spent millions of dollars on advertising on Facebook for you as a new customer to benefit from those millions of dollars, right? And by the way, you don't need to do this. I have resource partners. They've spent millions of dollars. They've already got the data sets. All you got to do is plug them in and go, hey, we've got the data sets. Here's how we go, right? So first of all, the lead generation thing, I think I've just taken care of, Right. That's number one, right? Getting people to an appointment, make an offer that is relevant. Think about how you help people. Think about how you add value. Show people. The best strategy to get appointments is teach people what you know, right? Don't go and blast people. Don't get married on the first date. This is about building relationships. We need to teach people what we know. Teach people what we know right? If we teach people we know, we're going to get clients. Every single person here, I, I would love to see, type one on the keyboard if you got your first client from a connection that you knew, somebody who knew in your network. Type one on the keyboard if you got your first paying customer from somebody who you knew, from your from your close network. Just type one. How many people are typing one, Raul? I typed one. Who else there out there? Like you got a customer from somebody in your network. Type one. Somebody you know. You got a, you somebody picked up you a know. client. Yeah. You, you know somebody who's from your familiar network. You got, you, you've got your first client from somebody you know. My, 34 years ago, when I started my consulting business, right, uh, um, um, a friend of mine became my first client, right? A friend of mine became my first client. Who got clients from their network? Just type one. How many people type one? We've got people yep, we got a bunch of, bunch yeah. of ones coming. How do you think Gary Vee got his first client? How do you think Richard Branson got his first customer? How do you think uh, uh, Bezos got his first clients? How do you think any consultant gets their clients from people they know? And one of the things you want to be doing is regularly letting the people you know what you do, right? If you regular people, let people you know what you do, let people you know what you do, you're going to get more clients, more referrals, easy to sell, 
right? The first place I start every month, I do a campaign to my familiar list, friends, family, associates, uh, people that I go, my accountant, my insurance broker, my, my uh, butcher, my, you know, people that I know, people I interact with who are in business. Every month I run a campaign to those people, every month. And guess what? Every time I run a campaign to those people, I get clients. How cool is that? Free customers right? Just from people I know. But you need to let people know what you do and how you help. And one of the easiest ways to do that is to teach people what you know, right? Teach people what you know. So, hey, look, don't take my word for it. Let me show you how a Facebook ad campaign works. Let me show you the important numbers. Let me show what you need to be looking out for. And then at the end of the day, if you want to go and do it, you can, or if you like, I can help you. That is the easiest sales conversion you're going to make. You get a 50-50 chance of winning that deal. Let me show you what happens and why it's important. Because when people understand the nuance of like running a Facebook campaign is about strategy. It's about testing. It's about copy, a creative, the optimization, the A-B split testing, the cost per click to scale campaigns, right? Uh, then cost of acquisition. The actual sales cost of acquisition is probably the most important number they need to know. Most people don't know how to do this, right? Or don't, they don't know what to do in that situation. If you show them, you're, what you're doing is you're showing them, them the complexity. And if they see the complexity, they go, I can see the benefit of this. This, Yeah, I know how this is working, right? But I'm not going to do that, right? So this is your easiest close on the planet. Would you like us, our team, to do that for you? you got a 50-50 chance of winning that deal. That's a 50-50 conversion rate. Show people how it works. Then say, you've got two choices, right? Now you're dangerous. You know more stuff. The problem is you're only dangerous if we apply it. So are you going to apply it or would you like us to help you with that? Very, very simple, right? Um, uh, so you can literally allow people to walk themselves in your clothes. That's the fastest way that I know to generate clients is to demonstrate to them. You know, uh, we one of the things we're doing in Champions, uh, we talk about, because we talk about selling strategy. We don't talk about getting free, free uh, strategy sessions. We don't do that. I always talk about getting paid for your time and valuing your time. And when you're valued for your time, you're actually going to make more money because the client will actually convert better because they've already invested money in what you have to offer. And so people will do more business with you when they invest, right? So one of the things we talk about, we talk about the napkin, the mapping of the idea, drawing out what a campaign looks like, you know, traffic, Facebook ad, to landing page, landing page, multiple email campaign, uh, a calendar, phone call, like literally mapping that out to people, but getting paid to do it, right? Because when you walk people through that process, you're giving them that, an understanding of that process and how it applies to them. So, so drawing out a process rather than presenting a process has much more power. People connect with that more visually, more powerfully, right? Raul, have you ever sat down, somebody mapped something out, drawn something out and they go, yep, we, want it, we need to do that? Oh, yeah. That's, that's I've how done it all the time. Exactly. One of my champions right now is yeah. using high level, go high level software where he's mapped out like a, there's an 18 sequence to mapping to an appointment. There is a, a text message sequence. There's like a five different sequences and it looks like spaghetti, like the pie chart, the whole chart looks like spaghetti. But he sits down with his client and he pulls out the pie chart, right? The, 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 the spaghetti chart. And he sits there and says, well, this is the system that right now uh, is converting 100% people showing up to a phone call. What's your conversion rate on people showing up to your phone call right now? Uh, most of them don't show up. What do you think will happen if they all showed up? Uh, business is going to go through the roof. So let me say, so what do you think of this uh, little system here? What do you think? And the guy says, I need that. I want that. Give me that, right? Demonstrate through diagram, through a Venn diagram of how or what the, what the process is. Uh, show them on the map and say, look, this right now you don't have this. But if you were to have this, what do you think is going to happen? If you had a system to follow up, a system to nurture, a system to uh, convert, a system to get people in your calendar, a system that communicates a message. What if we could build independent systems like that? What would the difference be to your business? Oh, that would be like crack cocaine for my business, right? I need to do that right now. Demonstrate and you'll convert more sales, right? Teach people what you know, you'll make a lot more sales. It's much easier to get people on the phone if you're going to give them some value and say, hey, let me show you how it works. I'll give you the campaigns. Uh, right now, one of the things that I've got people doing is craft a really good offer on Facebook, like craft a really good offer for your market and just go, can I walk you through why this offer, like the offer's there, but it's the optimization that's the real thing that they need help with. So I can give you a great offer, but if we don't optimize it, this offer will flop, right? The ad in and of itself isn't going to work. It's the strategy that comes with the ad that's going to work. So let me show you what's already working, right? Now, if I could talk about strategy and say, great, here's the idea or here's a concept. Now we've got two choices. You can do this or would you like us, our people that do this all day long, help you with that, right? 
easy peasy sales process. The fastest way to sell something to anybody is give them exactly what they are after. And what you do is you want to first establish what their objective is. What is the result that you're trying to generate? What is the thing that you want? What is the, the I must have this, right? Right now, we want to add another 50,000. We want to add $600,000 of the revenue to our business right now. That means you want to put 50 grand a month extra over and above what you're doing into your business. Yes? They go, yeah. So my next question, now I've got the objective. My next question is, well, why is that important? Right? Why is it important? Why this number? Why is that important? Why is it a must for you to have this thing? Well, we want to expand. We want to grow. I want to buy jet skis. I want to buy my Ferrari. Uh, I want to take my kids to, to, to on vacation. I want to do all these things. I want to spend some time with my family, work less. These are all the reasons why that's important, right? Now, let me ask you, if you didn't achieve that outcome in the 12 months, what's the conversation going to be like with you personally? What are you going to say to yourself? Is it going to suck? So yeah. Do you want to have the conversation? What's going to happen with the conversation if you actually hit that mark, right? What's going to happen there? They're going to go, it's going to be outstanding. That's exactly what we want to do. We've been talking about doing this the last three years. Right now, we need to do that stuff that we said we want to do, right? Great. We've got an objective. Now we've got resolve. Why it's important. Why it's a must. Now, the next thing is, well, okay, that's really good. We've got the objective. But right now, we don't have a system or a process that's actually going to get this outcome right now. Everything you're doing right now is not going to give you that extra 50 grand. So what are the bottlenecks right now that are holding you back? Well, we don't do enough advertising, don't do enough marketing, don't have the, we don't have the people, don't have the man hours, don't have the resources, don't, you know, think the, we don't have the systems, uh, we're not sure about our offer, right? So now we have a list of all the things that they need to fix that are stopping them. So we now have the objective. We now have the resolve, the reason why it's important and must. And now they're telling us, well, this is why it's not happening, right? So now here's where I step in and you step in. Really simple. You know what? Can I just share something really simple with you? It might help. Is it okay with you? They're going to go, yeah, absolutely sure. What if I were to sit down with you and we devised an actual plan, a structured approach to eliminate these bottlenecks and show you how we can actually achieve that outcome of that 50K extra revenue in your business. And then worked out a way so you can actually see a demonstrable, measurable return on investment so that we make this easier for you to accommodate, but more importantly, to actually maximize your profitability. Are you interested in that plan? Now, I have never had a single person in the world say no to that offer. Right, I'm gonna. We're focusing on your objective. This is why it's important. Here's what's stopping you. But what if we got our heads together and I can devise a plan with you, right, and show you the way on how we can bridge the gap between here and here, eliminate some of those roadblocks, and get you going. And more importantly, make it easy for you to invest so that you can see a measurable ROI. Would that be cool? Every business owner on the planet will say yes to that question, right? Now they're saying, great, let's do the plan. So we go through the plan. We say, this is what we're going to do. We need an ad budget. We need a, a management budget. We need some, we need some uh, things we need to put into place to make this work. We've got to maybe start a new website. Maybe we've got to open up a new landing page, run a new type of campaign, devise a strategy. Now from here, this is the numbers that we're working with to actually achieve that outcome. Based on our research, based on what we know, here's what we've got to do. Now, you're saying 50 grand a month, $600,000 a year. If we kept the same strategy working for the next three years, that's $1.8 million worth of revenue to your business. Let me ask you, is it worth chasing that $1.8 million worth of business? And they're going to go, hell yeah. Even if we did half of that, 900 grand worth of business, still worth chasing? Yeah, hell yeah. Absolutely. Right? Great. So is it okay if I walk you through how we work together to get that outcome? Can we work together to do that? If you follow that process, 80% of the time, that person's going to say yes. That person's going to buy what it is that you have to offer. Because what you've done is you've articulated a really simple understanding of what is important to them in their business, understanding of, of why that's important, and understanding of what's stopping them from having that, understanding that you are the person that bridges the gap between where they are and where they want to be. And now there's more value in what you've got to do. You can actually charge at higher prices because they see the value proposition based on the result or the outcome they're aiming for. Even if I didn't make him 600,000, I got him 300,000 and I charged him 40 grand to get that 300 grand, that's a good deal, right? He's going to go, and I'm going to make it easy for you. I'm going to finance it for you, right? It's going to cost you four grand a month, right? To do that, management fires. You've got to give me an ad budget, right? And they're going to go four grand a month, $300,000, 40 grand, 300 grand. Good deal. That's half of what we said we were going for. So if we hit the strides, that's even better, right? So that's the easiest way to close a sales deal right now. 
show people, understand the objective, work with them in partnership, share with them. This is what we would normally do. We do the plan, we do the strategy, we put a proposal together. Don't do that. Walk through a real thing. Mark Condell, one of the guys that I work with, he closes 100% of his deals. He doesn't go beyond that phase of, if that's not really important to you, there's no point in us talking. He only talks to people saying, that is a 10 out of 10, I must do this. Well, great, if it's a must, let's work together to help you to hit that outcome, right? I that's the that. fastest yeah, no, way that, to close that's, the deal and make it sell. Pretty yeah, simple. Yeah, I mean, then you talked about talking to buyers. That's the best way to talk to yeah. buyers is people. No scripts. Are, There's none of this bullshit yeah. scripting. You're you're doing this anyway. You're having right. conversations like this anyway, right? Uh, you, you know, there is a pro. I've actually mapped out your script for you right there in that process, right? Now, happy to answer some questions, Raul, because I know that we've been going on for a bit of time here. Yeah. If you've got any questions, but also I want to also say, because I want to know more, um, about the GSD program that you were talking about earlier on. You mentioned something that people can take advantage of. I'd love for you to talk about that. In fact, I'm going to stop sharing my screen, uh, get you back here. Um, can we talk about that? Yeah. So, so we have the, we have the GSD program. So some of you guys heard some fantastic training, some sales ninja tactics, where to find leads, how to handle client, uh, the conversations even on this call. However, for some of you guys, you guys are going to need a lot more help. Um, and what the GSD is, is specifically targeted towards people who are not making that quarter million dollars in a, a, a year yet. It's under a quarter million, which is 20 grand a month. We want to get people from point A to point B in this particular training. And then from there, we level you up. Um, John's been so kind enough to include one of his trainings in our program as well. And I'm going to share my screen to show you some of the items that are inside of the GSD program. Um, and I have a bonus as well for people to, let me close my email. Let's see. Are you guys seeing my screen? Can you see the, uh, uh, GSD landing page here? John? I got it, man. Can you oh, see so it? I'm loving this program. I'm just about, I'm, I'm, I'm just looking at all the modules going. Can you, see, yep, the, can, can you see the modules right now? It's my, my screen showing. Okay. Yep. That's okay, cool. Perfect. Yeah. So, so essentially like some of the questions that we had there was finding your perfect niche. If somebody's looking to transition, if you don't have a niche, it's hard to sell when you don't have an ideal target audience that you're selling to. So we help you with systems and processes and documents on exactly how to craft and find your perfect niche and not something that just has money, but something that you'd actually love to do, not just now, but also maybe think in the next 12 months from now. So we design like your life around the business, not the business around the life. Um, because I've already seen people who start and chase the money, then those are the same people six months, 12 months later that are burned out and starting over taking these long, crazy breaks. We don't want that. We want something we love. We want to make a lot of money here and also help people that we love to help along the way. So we enjoy it. It's kind of like a Gary V, do shit you love to do. Um, module number two that, that uh, John talked about was crafting that irresistible offer. I mean, it's, it's important to put and seed the right offer so your people can raise their hand and say yes to you. That's so important because there's so many shitty offers out there. And with so many businesses going out of business, it's because they suck at making offers. They suck at lead generation. They suck at sales. And then they don't even follow up with their leads. And worse, they don't even tell their customers that their business is still open and what else they do. So they fail to communicate to their existing database, leaving a lot of money on the table. So that's such an important aspect. And when you craft real good offers, you have a really good database of people. Um, and then like John had mentioned, even in this training, where to find customers for free, very fast and with a purpose that will actually pay you money, not the freeloaders, not the tire kickers. Those are great for like recorded content. These are the people that the, you really kind of present right in front of their face. Like John mentioned is let's just tell people the world we're open and demonstrate to them exactly what you do and how it can help them and open the gap if they do it alone or do it with you which is going to give them a greater degree of success. Most often it's going to be with a marketing person. Um, and then the module four, going into sales tools and documents, like we have all our pricing sheets, our pitch decks, all of our webinar templates, our contracts, everything you can want in an agency. Over the last 15 years, we've created a lot of collateral. And in that collateral, I still see people getting stuck on like, what do I charge people? Like, what do I send them when, when I close the deal? I mean, I've had people even say they closed the deal, but they forgot the credit card. 
<laughs> so 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 it, get, it, it walks you through the step-by-step -step processes and hands you the documents and then oftentimes when in doubt share your screen and show the prices and say pick one which one's you that's an easy sales pitch too because i've seen people close deals just pointing at the document and saying all right which which one's you um so you don't even have to yeah. talk <laughs> um yeah and uh and then last but certainly not least i mean there's a bunch of bonuses that i'll go over but there's the uh the the website right here I'll, I'll i'll have cody throw it into the chat or i'll throw it in the chat myself um but uh the how to close the deal what are you going to say when somebody says yes what are you going to say when you're all, when they book on your calendar you have this link with a small little survey you have their cell phone you pick up the phone you introduce yourself what are the words that you say to a jog their memory if they forgot who you were and also uh, what are you going to say to close the deal? How are you going to open the gap? How are you going to know their pains? How are you going to know what they're looking for? Um, are they looking, is this important to them right now? Or is it something they're looking for in the future? So going through the frameworks, we have like step-by-step -step scripts, but I like to use the word framework because anybody can go to Google and download a script. It's how you apply it to your business. And that's the training you get. So this isn't just an online video course where you watch a bunch of stuff and hopefully it, it'll work for you. And, and likely it probably won't um, because if you wanted all that kind of stuff, you can just go to the library. But what it comes with is, is myself, <laughs> my team, all every week walking you through like solving your biggest bottlenecks. So we're not a dictatorship type company where we're just going to pitch at you on every call and tell you, here's what we're going to do today. And here's the agenda and do Q and A at the end. We're actually going to go one-on-one -on -one and say, Hey, what is your bottleneck? What is it that we can solve? Like, did you have a good sales conversation? Are you stuck? Are you just like kind of paralyzed with overload of information or do you have a client that's threatening to cancel and you want to save the deal and not only save the deal, but have them stop going out of scope and also upsell them in that threatening environment. So we teach all of those skills in our arsenal, having done this for, for 15 years. Um, and then you can see what else we have. Like, like we shared some, some great uh, offers that you guys can make. We actually give away ours too. So if you're a coach and agency and you want more customers, swipe our files because we're constantly spending thousands upon thousands of dollars every single month. So we're giving away what actually works. Just tailor it to yours. If you can copy and paste, I mean, you'll, you'll be able to run ads very well. We'll even have our targeting in here as well. And then as you can see, we have special guest trainings with subject matter experts. John's going to go into the program with this training too. So we're going to download it, remove it from the, from the group and put it only in this program. Um, and we have our coaching call vault. Every call gets recorded. It gets put into the system. So if you ever miss a call, you can always go back and listen to them or all the past calls. Um, and with John's six uh, part mini course on facts, action strategies on how to grow your agency, you'll have access to what we just went over all in one place. So you don't have to have all this content and bookmarks all over the joint. It's all consolidated in one simple to use process. And then also, as a bonus, we have a one-on-one -on -one war plan call. This is where we design your business over the, 90, the next 90 days. So those of you guys that are under 20 grand, this, I want to make a direct offer. This is for you. If you want the fastest path to cash and success at the same time with the leadership that will help you get you there, then I want to invite you guys to explore this and take a chance on yourselves. It's proven. We won't let you fail. We're not going to guarantee your set success. I want to be very clear, but we will not let you fail. It's not uncommon for people to close four or five, $6,000 a month deals within the first 10 days. So thanks for that open introduction to allowing me to talk about the program. John, is there anything you want to ask? I, also, I want to give you another bonus, man. I'm going to give you, we, we have this thing. I call it the million dollar blueprint that we, we use. I still use this blueprint uh, myself in my business. I used a tactic in the blueprint that generated hundred grand cash for me in the middle of, uh, uh, in fact, last month, it generated 115 grand worth of cash, this exact strategy. I'm happy to, uh, you can put that in the back end of this program. So it's a really fast start. Very, if you just, it literally gives you the script, it gives you the email, it gives you everything. If you just copy and paste and just adapt it to you, uh, it, you will generate revenue. So I'm happy to give that to you for people who jump into this because everything here are really the fundamentals of making sure that you're maximizing opportunity for, for sales. Raul and the team uh, are some of the best coaches that I know in this marketplace because they've been in this game for long enough. They've had a lot of experience. Uh, I like to learn from people who know what they're doing. I certainly
certainly encourage people to invest in people that know what they're doing. And Raul and his team are outstanding at what they do. Some of the results that I've seen that they've gotten for their clients have been fantastic. Uh, and I know that you are in absolutely good hands uh, with the GSD Online Six Figure Training Program. And everybody needs these fundamentals. Everything that Raul has put together in this product is exactly the sorts of things that when I was 30 years ago, when I was looking to uh, look at my business, these are all the key areas that I needed to focus on to grow. And one of the fastest ways that you can grow is to have that focus in advance, right? If you have to figure all this stuff out, it's going to take you forever. But I cannot uh, highly recommend this training. Uh, Raul is not paying me any money to endorse this. I don't endorse uh, programs lightly. Uh, um, this, is, this is something that he has put together through his experience and knowledge that is going to help people get amazing results like they already have through the programs that he's been presenting. Uh, for me, I highly encourage for those who do this to me is a no brainer, right? One client is probably, if you generate one client, Raul, you've pretty much paid for the program five or 10 times over. You get a client yeah, paying you four grand a month, right? That's that, You get a client paying you four grand a month, that's $48,000 for a $2,000 investment. That's insane. That is an insane return on investment. One customer is going to more than pay for this program, yeah? So right. if you want to accelerate your process, man, I, if anybody's watching this or listening to this or even watching this replay, uh, to me, this is a no-brainer. Uh, I would absolutely encourage you to take advantage of this. No, I appreciate that. And also think about the opportunity costs of, of, of staying stuck. Um, yeah. It may be a little bit harder to, to kind of interweave um, multiple courses, multiple YouTube channels, multiple opt-ins that you're on on all these different email lists that are just kind of distracting your day versus making your day extremely productive where you wake up to leads, you wake up to an agenda that's very clear and outlined for you. So you can just scale your agency without fear, without confusion. And that's really the most important part is like when you mentioned the mindset, that is absolutely imperative um, to, to grow your business and get out of this first stage of growth. And then you're going to be experiencing that freedom. You can always buy those Lambos and buy those nice meals on a regular basis and upgrade your lifestyle. That's always an option. However, if you want to fuel that back into your business and get to that seven figure mark, then you can now decide, do you want the lifestyle and the bling bling, or do you want to grow it with leadership um, like John had so eloquently stated, the three levels of, of success and, and the different parts of that part uh, of the growth of your business. So, like I said, if anybody's interested, jump on this. This is a this is our our price right now for this particular event. We're stacking it with all these extra bonuses. Uh, John's going to give away one more bonus as well, which I'll update this landing page. So I'll send this landing page to everybody out there um, that's watched this video. Um, and this is going to be your fastest path to cash. So with that being said, is there anything you want to end with, John? Man, I'm happy to answer some questions. I've got a few minutes okay. here. If, if, yeah. if people got some questions about what I've talked about, cool. uh, let's answer some of those questions. Yeah. Okay, cool. So right here, um, well, it says it's been a game changer already two months in. Thanks, Denise. She's one of our students in the program right now. Eric cool. Torres, uh, Lorenzo. What's up, Lorenzo? I don't know if you're still on here. He's also a student of ours. Um, Eric Torres, 100%, you need to do this. Um, Garrett, we're going to help you get those clients. Um, one of the questions that I, that I scrolled by earlier was about niching. Somebody's in the real estate yep. niche right now and mm -hmm. they want, they're thinking about pivoting. Like, what do you recommend they do? Is there like a formula? Is there a thought process? And also, is that a bad idea? Okay, so um, uh, every market has its has its ups and downs, and, but real estate is one of those markets that's actually not going to disappear too quickly. Uh, it's still it's still going to be there. Uh, there are still hot markets. I was just talking to somebody who's in uh, uh, in um, uh, uh, up in Virginia, and the real estate market is going crazy. Even in the middle of all this crap that's going on, it's it's going crazy. So, uh, real estate people, one thing that they've figured out is they've figured out that the whole online thing. Uh, they haven't got it together and they need help with online. If you can put together a product or a program that helps them to get a blueprint to, to introduce buyers and, and sellers into their market, it is a license to print money. It's still a big market and the, high, and the ticket value of the, of the commissions are fairly high as well. The other thing with a real estate niche, you want to look at where, where there are the hot uh, 
areas of growth in real estate. Uh, commercial real estate is going to take a little bit of a tank right now, uh, but the but. Uh, accommodation real estate, rental market, that's going to grow in the real estate market. Uh, and also, um, there's going to be a shift in uh, people who are actually going to downsize uh, their properties as well. So there are niches within certain markets in the real estate industry that are still really hot right now. I would not discount that market. The real key to doing well in a niche is to understand what the problem is and solve the actual problem. Listen to, you know, go and talk to a few real estate guys and say, listen, you're not going to go away, right? Your business and your industry is not going to disappear, right? Yeah, we've got a bit of an issue right now that we have to address, but what can we do to pivot in the marketplace? I know realtors right now, in fact, I'm talking to one this afternoon because I'm looking at uh, looking at something this afternoon. Um, I'm asking him, like, how have you been? He says, mate, I've never been busier in my life. So everybody's been locked down. I've been operating virtually. We've been doing virtual walkthroughs of homes and displays to people who are still who still got money, who are still interested in buying. So is it a, is it a good niche? It is a good niche because it's a niche that needs help with marketing, especially with online marketing. And with all these real estate shows and all these people showing renovations and stuff like that, that's keeping people top of mind in that real estate market. So, so to me, yes, real estate is a good market. But what you got to do is find that real problem. If you could, if it's a common problem or a vernacular that is occurring in the market, if you have a way of solving that problem, now you've got a license to print money. You've got everybody that's going to literally just jump on board and buy what you have to offer in the real estate market. So hopefully that helps yeah. whoever asked that question. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, and, and just to touch on that, like you mentioned, the napkin plan is just demonstrate yeah. because that'll differentiate you from all the noise. Because for whatever reason, when people start digital marketing, it seems like real estate is like one of those popular categories to jump into. Um, Absolutely. So, so yeah, it's just a matter of demonstrating the the process differently, like the, maybe the two step pre qualify them and say, hey, if we put together a plan that would get you hot leads, so I can show you what's already working, where it's generated six transactions last month for one client in your exact situation, would that be something you want to move forward with to see? So you just demonstrate them. So you just kind of get them excited that their future is in the next presentation. And then you make sure that you vetted them out really, really well, that that's their goals, their desires. They must hit that number, their why. And then you show them the, the goods. And then the answer should be yes, more often than no. Yeah. If you, if you like people, I'll give an example. One of the guys that I was working with, Patrick, uh, you know, it's really weird. Like he was saying, I don't know if this deal is going to close. I said, but these people are still asking you questions. They're still interested in what you have to offer. They might be coming in and countering, or countering what you're saying or counter offering, but they're still in the game. They're, ask, they're telling you, they're literally by asking the questions that they're asking, they're telling you that they want to buy. Like uh, everything you're telling me about the engagement, if somebody's actively engaging and listening, if, uh, so this is the way I look at it from a, from, a, from a headspace or from a mindset point of view. If you make the time with me, Raul, if you take my time in my calendar and you've answered a few questions, then you're, you're coming to me because you are interested in getting something done. You're not coming to me to waste my time, to pick my brains, to figure something out. You've actually taken your time to answer a few questions, to, to, get, to get clear in your thinking. And at the end of that, I've told you in advance that uh, this, is what it's, this is what it costs you to work with me. Like you already know that before you come. So if you show up to my meeting and you're asking me specific questions about solving a particular problem, then it's my job to help you solve that problem. And if I can help you and I'm succinct and I show you, I can demonstrate to you or I can help you get to the objective your, your, and your outcome, 90% of the time, you're gonna become a customer, right? If I take that philosophy. So I have this philosophy that if you're gonna spend time with me, if you jump into my calendar, right? And you're coming to me to help you and you've identified what you believe you need help with, then I'm gonna say, okay, let's work on that. And at the end of the day, uh, I guess the only thing we've got to do is to actually implement what we're talking about. If we don't implement what we're talking about, then we don't even need to be here in the first place, right? So anytime somebody sits in your calendar who's sitting there interested in what you have to offer, that is a buyer. Regardless of things like money and budget, money and budget is a mindset thing. We have more problems with money and budget than the customer does. We're more scared of the price than they are because they don't see the price until you show them. I like to tell people the price before they even get there right? And they still show up. We have a strategy in a process that I teach. Uh, it's, called, it's called a discovery model, right? The client knows they're in for a sixty dollars to $80,000 investment before they get to the presentation. They know they're going to spend that money before they get there. They know what the budget is, right? So that when they show up, we've got to walk them through as to answering their questions and say, great, you're here, you know how much it costs, so you, you know that you're going to spend some money, 
right? So I guess the only thing we've got to do is put this in a place, yes or no. Now, if it's a no, I want to understand why we're here in the first place if it's a no, because you already know how much it's going to cost. So what made you come here to have this conversation to then walk away and say no? Because you knew what the price was before you got here. So it's not about the money. So it must be something else. We've missed something. We need to find out what that is. One of the best trainings, so those of you watching this video or the replay, there's a guy called Jai Jiang, J-A-I-J-A-I-N-G. He's on the TED. He's got a TED talk. And the TED talk is about rejection, right? And what he did was this guy was crazy, you know, uh, 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 speaks with, he has a very heavy Asian accent, speaks English perfectly and beautifully, but he's out there, you know, he's in America and he's trying to make a go of his life, right? And, but he was very scared of being rejected. That was his big thing. If you reject me, it's like somebody took a knife in my half and stabbed me, right? And so what he did was say, you know what? That rejection thing was more about a fear of how I've been rejected in the past and how that made me feel, right, on a personal level. So what I want to do is I want to run out there and get rejected a hundred times. I wanted to go out there and purposely get rejected. So he would ask people for ridiculous things. Like he would go up to a home, knock on the door and say, hey, can I plant this tree in your front yard? <laughs> and the person's going to go, no. But in this case, the person said, look, no, you can't plant a tree in my front yard. But I know Mary over the road and she would love a free tree in her front yard. So what does Jai go do? Goes over the road and says to Mary, say, hey, spoke to Sue. Sue says, you like free trees. Can I plant this free tree in your front yard? Yes, right? Oftentimes, he, he went, I think there was a story, he went to Dunkin' Donuts, right? And he went to Dunkin' Donuts asking the, asking the guy at the counter, said, listen, can you make me the Dunkin' Donuts in the Olympic shape of the Olympic rings? Can you make them the Olympic rings and the colors of the, with the donut glaze on top of them? And the guy looked at him, right, and went, let me see if we can do that. I'm going to go and talk to the manager. So the guy goes back to the manager and manager says, yeah, we can make you a donut that looks like the Olympic rings, right? If you don't ask, you don't get, right? But here's the thing. There are many people that said no to his ridiculous requests. And here's the question he asked when they said no. He said, why? Why are you rejecting my question, my offer? Why are you rejecting? And then people would give him answers like, well, I need more information or I need to understand a little bit about how that works or I need to know you a little bit better. Or so all these questions, all these things came up as the reasons why people wouldn't make a favorable decision to say yes. And so now when he started asking questions, he used to give people more context, more information, get to know him a little bit about. And what happened? Yes, 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 yes. He went from rejection to acceptance, right? To embracing, to engaging. Yeah. So understand that rejection, the pricing thing is a mindset thing. You know, there's guys out there that are charging, you know, I just shared with you, one of our guys are charging two grand for four emails a month. So two grand an email, $2,000 for one email, Re regardless if it's one paragraph or 20 paragraphs, it's 2k one email, right? Four emails minimum per month. They've got clients that order 10 emails a month. Do the math, right? Now, what is the difference between a $2,000 email and a $50 email, right? Apart from the price, right? It's the thinking, the value proposition, and the strategy that goes behind it. Strategy is way more valuable than the item or the thing or the idea in and of itself. And you give away strategy all the time. Don't give away strategy. It's worth something, right? So understand you've got an opportunity. That's why this program that Raul and his team has put together is an absolute must in, in, terms of, uh, in terms of business engagement. Having that support, having that training, having those systems that are already working, that's why this is a no-brainer for me, right? So understand that price is up here because I know people, like I've, I've taken people literally, they've been selling Facebook ads at $1,500 a month. Now they're selling Facebook ads at 20 grand, 100 grand for management fees for Facebook ads. And that's happened in the space of just rethinking what it is that they were doing with the client and understanding the value proposition from the client's perspective. And the client turned around and said, that's a no brainer. In fact, they thought that was too cheap. They thought a, they thought a hundred thousand dollar management fee was too cheap, right? Which meant that they, that they could have, they would have paid more for that, right? Now I know that's big numbers for people on this call, but that's what's out there right now. You know, Patrick, the guy I talked to that generated the 117 grand deal, he's a 21 year old kid out in the marketplace playing with the big boys at the level at the area where there's less competition. Everybody's playing the small game, but there's less competition at the big market and they are looking for people who know what they're doing because Patrick knows how to do great Facebook ads. He knows how to make it work, right? That's why they hired him. That's why they're paying him hundred grand for his management fees. So price is all here, right? And nobody knows the price until you give it to them. 
So whatever, whatever price you put in, I know it's already going to be too cheap. So what I do is whatever price you're going to put down on your proposal or on your pitch deck, up it by 20% straight away. So before you type it out, if it's two grand a month, it's going to be 2,400 a month. Just type out that extra $400 is net profit in your back pocket that you don't have to pay any extra cost for. That's clean in the pack, right? And we all love the folding stuff, right? Yeah, exactly. Any other questions, Raul? Yeah, let's look at the questions. BG, you see any questions on there? All right. How do you separate teaching what you know from paid strategy sessions? Where is the line? Okay, yeah. Russell has a good question. It says, How do you separate teaching what you know from a paid from the paid strategy sessions? Um, where, let me repeat this. Where's the line where you go from teaching to actually doing? So when you're doing the paid strategy, you're not giving a you're yeah. you're only giving the what and the why, you're not giving the how. Right. Well, in paid strategy, you're giving you're giving uh, what needs to happen. Yeah. Uh, what you've done is you've 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 made an assessment and you're just focusing on what and why. The how is what they're buying you for. That's that's what they're buying. Your your black box is what you do to deliver the result for the client. Now, I sometimes will go into some brief hows because some people are going to ask you, well, how the hell do you do this? Well, we have a methodology, we have a strategy, we have training, we have systems, we have processes, right? And, and, there, and there is a process and a structure to get the outcome. I don't go into the technical hows. I'm more, it's more the, the, the pieces of the puzzle that get the result, right? So what we need is like, like going through that mind map idea, right? One, number one thing we focus on is strategy. That's where the most money spent is on strategy, right? The next uh, area we focus on is the ex execution implementation of the creative. The next part of the process we focus on is the optimization part. I don't actually go in and say, this is how we optimize an ad. I just say, we have to optimize an ad, right? So that's a block, right? Mm -hmm. Then from there, we've got to look at, Feedback, we've got, to we've got to run tests to scale. We're going to run you know, 10 different campaigns or 20 different campaigns to test to find out which one's going to work so we can scale. Once we do that, then we're going to run a scaling program. Then we're going to improve from the control, right? And so it's almost like you're walking through the mind map and that's really the how, but you're not actually going into the detail of the how right you're just going this is the fundamental building blocks of what that what has to happen when you show that to people most all of a sudden that's complexity right all of a sudden when you show the basic fundamentals of what has to happen they go holy crap that's a lot i didn't realize it wasn't just a matter of pasting an ad pasting an offer hitting a button and go no no there's hours of work that goes into this you know kevin one of the guys that i uh, that, that, that i uh uh, that's a colleague and we're in a mastermind together. He charges $20,000 just to do strategy before you run a single paid ad. You're going to pay him 40 grand for two months to figure out what the best campaign is going to look like. That's what people pay him. They pay him $40,000 up front for two months to frig around to make sure that the campaign is going to be a winner, <laughs> right? Then when they figured it out and they've run their tests, then they go and spend money on advertising, <laughs> right? But then when they do, the campaign scales like crazy. So they're getting paid 40 grand for strategy and then they get paid management on top of that. So, so, so the line is you don't, you don't need to give your, all your secrets away. By the way, I have given my secrets away and people still don't do it, right? I've given a whole bunch of secrets here. If you follow exactly what I've told you to do here, you'll make money. But a lot of people just won't implement it and that's okay. That's why they're going to hire you. That's why they're going to jump into this program. That's why you need to jump into this GSD online six-figure trading, right? Because at the end of the day, this is going to help you and guide you through that process right? So the line between the how, the how is just some fundamental pieces. The black box, my team, that's the real how, right? That's what they're buying. The people are going to sit on that ad campaign every 10 minutes to make sure that that thing's working. That's going to uh, hop in every day to make sure that the campaign's firing, uh, to make sure it's getting the results, right? That's what you're paying for. That's the black box. That's the how, yeah. So you still, you can go into a little, a uh, little fundamental sort of stuff, but you don't know, you know, the detail, they don't need to know. Brain, I've got brain surgeons. I've got mathematicians in my Facebook ad, ad campaign. The reason why I love mathematicians is, that, is they like to tinker. They're statistic guys. They're the best ad guys in the world, right? Because they can see the nuances of where it works. That's the guy I pay more than hundred thousand dollars a year to, right? The guy who's the, who's the, who's the crazy mathematician. That's the best advertising guy on the planet that I pay for, yeah? That's who I bring to my clients. I bring the crazy mathematician to my clients that's gonna make you hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars over the years to come. That's the how. So hopefully I answered that question for you.
Yeah, and think about it this way. If you took the uh, New England Patriots, their playbook that won them the Super Bowl and handed it over to a high school team or the Cleveland Browns, no no offense against you Cleveland Browns fans, but just give them the playbook, they'll still not be able to execute because they don't have the team, the players, the sauce, the know-how and the optimization in play. That's why yeah. That's why just a playbook alone – and a presentation sometimes alone doesn't just get you to a millionaire. Um, you need the leadership, you need the courses, you need all the documentation, you need the, the hands-on experience, and then also just, just practice and execute. 10,000 reps, 10,000 reps before you know what you're doing. Yeah. You know, do a hundred presentations before you know what you're doing in, in sales and a hundred presentations out of a hundred presentations, you would have closed 15, 20 deals, right? Get to your first hundred presentations. You'll be an expert in selling your stuff. Right. Most people don't talk to enough people. One person a day, 20 people a month, three to five deals a month. Easy to do. Right. But most people focus on all the wrong things. Right. They focus on all the things that aren't going to make them sales. Right. You want to be focused on income generating activities only. Uh, that's, if you're doing that one hour a day, you've got gold. This program, that's what this program is. This program is your one hour a day to absolute gold, you know, in terms of what you're doing. So I love this program, man. It's awesome. Yeah. So if you're ready to just get unstuck and explode your sales, let's do this as a family together. We, we welcome you. We invite you. Um, John's going to add an extra bonus. And also while we're at it for anybody that joins, I'm going to buy you two tickets to John's virtual event. So not just one, two, so you can give it to a loved one, a friend or somebody who needs it. Awesome, man. Thank you. Yeah, of course. My pleasure. All right. Let's see if there's any last questions for anybody here. And whoever's still on here, there's still a lot of you troopers that hung out here. Um, just what, drop some hearts, drop some love. Like, did you t tell us what you think about it and type in your favorite part? Um, and then we'll, we'll also reach out to you guys as well. Um, but if that's, uh, that's it for right now, John, thank you so much for starting your day. He's in uh, the lounge down under, right? Did I, did it, was my accent okay? Yeah, we started at five o'clock in the morning, man. <laughs> you got me up, you got me up super early. It was dark when I got up. It was five o'clock. <laughs> We're in the middle of winter. It's cold, <laughs> but uh, mate, I, I wouldn't have missed it. This is great. Uh, uh, it's always great to connect with you and uh, it's always great to share some uh, stuff. They're going to help some people out. So I hope people got a lot out of this. Uh, if you want to, make sure you go to website salesintensive.com. We're doing a web event for good, doing some great things. But we're, but one thing I do know right now, one of the biggest things that people need to fix is they need to fix their sites. 85% of sites right now are wrong. And most of them, even though they're responsive, they're still not right for, for mobile. Uh, and right now, this is where people are at. If we don't, do, if we don't get this strategy right, we're, we're in the wrong market. Uh, most powerful computer in the world. So uh, the sales intensive happening on the 18th of June. It's a four-hour masterclass on converting big deals. Awesome. Get that ticket, and we'll see you guys inside the GSD, and that's it. So bye for now. John, thank you so much, and have, enjoy Thanks, the man. rest of the day. I hope this was a good warm-up. I'm going to get on another webinar right now. I've got my <laughs> people I'm going to look after, so I've got a whole bunch of agencies around the world that we're, uh, we're talking to uh, in our programs. But anyway, thank you. I really awesome. appreciate you having me on. Love to come back uh, uh, in a little while, maybe talk about some of the new stuff that's going on, new opportunities. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Cool stuff. Yeah. Let's do it. We'll schedule right, something together. Bye, John. Thanks, man. Take care.